Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the January readings for all zodiac signs. You guys will be able to find on the description below uh, for each single sign. Uh, so it could be easier for you guys if you don't want to watch the whole video. Although I do encourage you guys at least to see or to hear, sorry, uh, the first couple of minutes of this reading only because we're going to be talking about the astrological events that are happening. Um, but like I said, if you want to keep it short and just go to your sun sign, moon, rising, or Venus, then you're welcome to do so. Uh, before we get into the readings, I do want to give you guys a very quick glimpse to what's to come or what to expect for this new year. Now, obviously, um, 2020, we're walking into a complete transition uh, with the eclipse, eclipse that recently was experienced. Um, not sure if you guys know a lot about astrology, but eclipses do take a very prominent, um, a very prominent transition that happens in our lives. Uh, depending on where where is it aspected in your chart. Now, with this, obviously, like I said, this is when eclipse energies take major changes. Uh, marriages, divorces, finding love, uh, death, as well as pregnancies, new beginnings. Um, with this eclipse, it's fixed extremely spiritual, going um, to Jupiter, Moon, and the Sun in Capricorn. Uh, there together will be pushing new beginnings with the new Moon based in inspiration. Uh, so when many planets can be, when you have a lot of planets in a specific house, uh, it can feel a little bit like you're going crazy. <laughs> Some of you guys may be experiencing like hearing voices, um, really an inner struggle that is going on, etc. All of this is because we have over four planets in one house. So that's like major. That's, that's, definitely going to really uh, push us in a positive way, uh, but obviously with a lot of breakthroughs, a lot of, like I said, a lot of new beginnings. Um, so the best way of describing it is like having four or five different radios on at the same time, each planet affecting a certain area in your life. And of course, depending on your chart, that's where it's going to be affecting. That's where it's highlighted. Um, so certain you know, like I said, a, a certain course in your life, depending on your chart. Um, and the best way to deal with these changes is to let go, to surrender. You will quickly find that if you try to resist the changes or you try to hold on uh, to certain situations, circumstances that are unfolding, um, you may not have it very easy. So again, the easiest way to do this is to surrender um, to let go. Only this is um, the way we can manage and deal with these changes and shifts that are happening. Um, in, and like I said, depending on where your chart is, uh, that will be affecting. Uh, to make these changes and to deal, um, to best deal with it is about letting go and surrendering. The solution will come with Jupiter, brings an angelic help, a bless, a blessing. Uh, Jupiter is a very bountiful planet and it's going to bring, like I said, when you surrender, when you don't over obsess over a situation and you let it, let it go and have faith, it will bring angelic assistance. Um, this is why a lot of you guys may already be experiencing having difficulty in certain aspects of your life and almost like, uh, something feeling like there is an urgency to fix whatever issue it is. Um, and then out of nowhere, someone comes along and helps you or someone helps with the transition. All of this is about angelic blessings. So a lot of you guys, those of you guys that are very spiritual may actually be experiencing a lot of spirit guides manifesting for you, uh, a lot of angels coming your way and opening new ways for you. All of this is because, again, like I said, the four planets that we have in just one house is really amplifying this energy. And like I said, Jupiter being the blessing or the bountiful planet, it's going to bring a lot of assistance. Now, um, with Uranus, Uranus brings wisdom uh, because the south node is affecting the eclipse. So hidden knowledge um, give a, a lot of surprises may start to come out. Uh, surprises in the sense of this with this conjunction that we're experiencing, there is a lot of things that whatever was hidden will come out to the open. 
uh, it's almost like the best way of saying it is kind of like um, something to lay foundation for something long term and blessings with new beginnings. Um, so again, like I said, uh, this is also considered, you know, um, a lot of suppressed, uh, a lot of suppressed or past life experiences will be uh, resolved and outpouring of secrets, untruths, realization, because this is connected to your subconscious. So you have to keep in mind that anything that is keeping you from progress will come up to surface for you to deal with. Uh, basically the breaker of lies and destruction and deceit in every aspect of our life. Everyone will experience this very differently. Uh, Keto is the spiritual angelic, spirit guides, angelic assistants, like I said. Whatever crisis you are experiencing in your life, they're coming to assist you. This crisis breaks, uh, destroys old patterns that will change in your subconscious with Capricorn bringing the materialization for something long term long lasting jupiter is good karma as well blessings merit uh, merits coming from good karma uh to release something to lay like i said the foundation for something long term and blessings with new beginnings we also are going to be experiencing in the first beginning of the year saturn and jupiter uh conjunction this is known in astrology as the royal conjunction um rising signs um is easier to be more precise so if you're watching this video i highly encourage you guys to specifically try to listen to your uh rising sign as it's going to give you a lot of insight for what's to come for this new year okay so without further ado let's get right into uh your reading so we're gonna start off with the first um we're gonna start off with aries um Let's see what spirit has for you guys. Now, Aries, uh, Jupiter and Saturn, Jupiter, Saturn, um, and Pluto is in your 10th house. Uh, career, but also begins where your personal ends. It's the house of mission. Jupiter is how we have been holding ourselves back. Aries, action-oriented, understands what fears we need to overcome. So a lot of you guys are going to be experiencing um, being challenged, uh, getting out of your comfort zone. For some of you guys, you may, and this is directly connected to your 10th house. So keep in mind, 10th house is all about career. It's all about finances. So for some of you guys, it could be the realization of, you know, I've been stuck here for quite a while. What is it that I need to do to grow? And then the resolution or the epiphany of what it is that you need to do will come about in January where you're going to have to make a decision that is going to directly impact your 10th house, which is that of finances. A lot of career changes here, you guys. A lot of people transitioning. Uh, some of you guys quitting an old job, going to a better paying job. Um, others of you experiencing, again, like I said, um, the understanding of what's holding you back to be able to move forward. For those of you guys that are very connected to old dogmas or self-preconditioned uh, notions from childhood, a lot of realization, a lot of breaking through and understanding, you know what, this old belief or this old pattern that I've been following or thinking or I've seen as truth and reality uh, is really what's keeping me from progress. So there's going to be a lot of resolution and again, like I said, a lot of going back to really understand what it is that those blockages have been holding you back and this is directly connected uh, to the subconscious you know it's very it's very difficult for us to program our subconscious because this is like think of it as an example if you come to the understanding of you know i've been overeating i've been eating a lot i need to get in a diet and your subconscious is like i don't care you could do all the diets you want i'm still going to be eating because this is what makes me feel good or this is how I deal with emotions or whatever it is. So subconscious is a little bit more difficult to uh, be able to learn how to pre not precondition, sorry, how to learn to recondition a certain belief. And this is what's going to be happening for you Aries out there um, and directly anything that is connected to your 10th house, which is career, um, you know, uh, career, finances, as well as, um, 
like I said, the beginning and where personal ends, meaning this is a house of mission. So for some of you guys, it could be being pulled towards a new path, a new career, but ultimately because this is your mission in life, this is what you should be doing or what your soul's purpose feels it should be doing. So a lot of changes in that aspect, Aries. All right, let's see what Spirit has for you guys. For January 2019, this is for Aries, January 2020, sorry, not 2019, we need to get used to 2020. All right, Spirit Guides, what are the messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus in regards for January 2020? What's coming towards them? What changes can they expect? What new beginnings and opportunities? are coming to them for this coming month of January. All right, we got a lot of choices. Aries, you have the seven of cups, seven of cups signifies having to, you know, ha not having to make a choice, but understanding that you have multiple choices, multiple opportunities. Uh, again, new transition that is coming could bring to you new um new beginnings as well as opportunities, but as well uh, could give you the upper hand in regards to a situation where there may be uh, a decision to be made, but it's not going to make, uh, it's not going to come about in a very rushful way because they are telling you, you will have options. Now your obstacle here is the nine of swords. So the nine of swords is that of your mind. Again, purging ourselves from anything that is keeping us from progress, from movement. Uh, past and passing, you have the karma. So again, we were just talking about uh, the kar karmatic ties that we are experiencing or will be experiencing with the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction, uh, known as the royal conjunction. Um, and again, any past experiences, uh, any bad karma, or sorry, any good karma that we've done, that we've gone out of our way to help other people, will be coming to you, Aries. It's almost in a collective way. So a lot of you guys will be experiencing this. Now, what's coming towards you is, again, like I said, an opportunity, an opportunity that it's going to bring a lot of happiness. There's a lot of wish fulfillment in this card. Now, what's on your mind is the Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups is, again, wish fulfillment. So they're telling me a lot of wish fulfillments will be granted in January for Aries. A lot of feeling of abundance or opportunity that is going to leave you feeling overflowing with emotion. Uh, perhaps some of you guys even trying to um, overcome or others of you, something you've been working very hard towards and it almost seemed like you just could not make it happen or it wasn't taking, you know, taking ground. You weren't able to, for those of you guys that are starting a new business, it just seemed like it was really slow and it wasn't really moving forward. Uh, you have a lot of opportunity and wish fulfillment coming towards you, Aries. Now, the bottom card here is the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords does incline uh, meditation. Again, we were talking about um, the, you know, in a, in a subconscious level, what we need to do to reprogram ourselves to be able to live our best life. And with the Four of Swords in a subconscious position, um, you're going to be experiencing, again, like I said, a lot of enlightenment, a lot of understanding, or even some of you guys looking into the law of attraction, others of you really getting deep into how to bend uh, certain energies. So when I hear bend, it, sig it signifies to me when we start to co-create. We are co-creators. A lot of us, unfortunately, are not aware of that. But when you start to tap into that, you will quickly start to see Again, a bountiful of rush of opportunities, abundance, and success coming your way, Aries. Now, your advice card here, Aries, is the Knight of Wands. Take action. From now, I want to say all the way to January 19th, um, whenever you feel like you have to make a decision or like you're given an opportunity, um, but they're giving you some type of time frame, jump on it and take that opportunity. Do not fear. Um, here's the thing, what they're telling me right now with this Knight of Wands is take action where action needs to be taken. 
If you felt like you've been procrastinating for quite a while, now is the time to not do that. If you don't want to experience being in the same position where you're at right now, six months from now, you need to start making those changes now, Aries. Um, and the reason why I say that is because this eclipse will uh, drastically affect for the next coming six months. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, the energies around you or people around you is the seven of swords. Seven of swords is deceit, not being able to see um, or or even being led astray or trying to be led astray. Uh, this could be people that you work with in the workplace that perhaps you're communicating or they're promising you that they're going to help you grow, that they're going to help you. They're going to try the best they can to get you that job opportunity or try to get you that higher ranking position. There is some deceit behind that, but do not worry. Again, Saturn, Jupiter is going to be highlighting whatever it is that they've been keeping in the back burner. So again, like I said, understand that a lot of this is why it's known as the um, the the destruction of deceit. Uh, and the reason for that is because Saturn does not play around. So if you've been feeling like someone's been double dealing or not being completely honest with you at work or in a work situation, understand that that will basically blow up in their face um, and the lie will be broken. You will be able to see through those lies and to understand perhaps they're the reason why they've been keeping you from progress. Now, your next card here is the Knight of Cups, an offering coming through. Now, for those of you guys that are currently single, I do see a, I do see for some of you guys a genuine uh, connection. And it could be with someone that you are already aware of, or it could be a friend that you consider like just a friend that turns into a relationship because we do have, you know, we do have an offering, but we also have an opening of heart. This to me represents the heart chakra. So there is a, an opening or a complete honesty, putting the cards on the table type of energy with a nine of cups, emotional fulfillment. So being able to actually start something long term, be able to move forward towards a new beginning, not only in your financial sector, as well as in your love life. Now, you have here the five of cups and with the five of cups, anyone, those of you Aries out there that currently or have been dealing with relationship issues, this is something that what they're telling you is you need to let go and letting go doesn't necessarily mean this is the end of that relationship. It just signifies that you need to let go of control. You need to let go if there is like almost um, fighting or working really hard towards holding to holding on to that relationship for dear life. Um, and you've been noticing that instead of bringing them closer, you're pushing them away from you. You need to stop doing that. Surrender to the process and let go. Step away from from yourself, meaning get out of your own way. You will start to see that progress starts to happen and movement starts to happen the moment you're no longer uh, driving yourself insane trying to fix or work on something that just needs a little repose, a little rest, okay? All right, I hope you guys enjoyed. Now let's go to Taurus. All right, Spirit gets what are the messages for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January 2020. What are the messages you want to convey? What is coming towards them? What opportunities are unfolding before them? What challenges they may be experiencing for the month of January 2020? All right, Taurus, uh, Saturn and Jupiter conjunction in your ninth house. Uh, the ninth house is all about new experiences, travel, long journeys. Uh, to expand education uh, comes through hard work, uh, but dedicating to hard work is about expansion. To reach that pot of gold, you need to really put effort into what you're wanting to make happen in any aspect of your life. Now, the ninth house, again, like I said, rules new experiences with the new moon um, as well as with uh, Jupiter and Saturn 
it's not going to come easy to you guys. I know that you guys have been really tested, but now, <clears throat> now is the time to not give up. Continue working towards achieving. There's a lot of travel for a lot of you guys, long journey. Some of you guys returning, going back to get some education, going back to college. Uh, for others of you guys that have been working really hard towards a project or something that is going to basically help you scale or go up the scale, um, they're definitely telling you here that now is the time to pretty much put the metal to the pedal <laughs> um, because you will be getting those rewards. You will be getting that uh, exposure. You will be getting those opportunities being given to you. But with Saturn, it comes after hard work. So again, um, for some of you guys, when it comes to relationships, you may experience having... Um, a realization some of you guys uh seen certain aspects about the partner that perhaps um they're willing to work or they're not willing to work and now is the time for you to say either we're gonna you know put effort towards it and make this work or uh like i said getting to the realization of i deserve better than this type of energy and therefore the long journey can also represent a journey of healing that needs to happen with you guys to be able to receive unconditional love. Um, so let's see what Spirit has for you guys for the month of January. A lot of travel here, you guys. Um, at the 10th house, you know, also rules um, growth and advancement when it comes to education. So like I said, a lot of you guys returning back to college or trying to pick up on a new trade, uh, some type of training. Uh, do not be surprised if the work where you're working out, they want to send you out to some training or some type of um, seeking knowledge. Definitely take it because this is going to be almost like uh, uh, getting to that pivotal moment where that's the only thing that's left to put in the work, um, some type of training to be able to transition into a higher paying job, a job that is going to be paying you much more money with better benefits, etc. All right, let's see what Spirit has for you guys. Now, your first card here is the Four of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles signifying being able to behold, being able to have, being able to attain. Now, the obstacle here is the shadow side, and this is the devil. Again, understanding or even uh, really being able to break through lies. Uh, if you do tend, um, if you tend to... Uh, be attracted or be pulled towards people that are very much um, the you know the 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 deceit the deceitful people the people that tend to live you know um, a, a different lifestyle from the one that they portray to uh, that they portray to the sun meaning the people around them um, you will come to understand this you will be able to see through this. And you will be able to say or to make decisions based off of not what your wishful thinking is, but going off of the practicality, meaning going off of what you know and what you understand now in the present. So a lot of you guys detaching from very toxic relationships. Now, your next card here is the six of swords, being able to move forward to calmer waters, being able to make your own path or decide to make a, a choice that perhaps may not be easy for you, Taurus. For some of you guys, detaching is almost impossible. Uh, this is what you've considered or what you've convinced yourself. For some of you guys, it could even be that you've tried to remove yourself from a relationship, but you keep coming back to it. With the Eight of Swords, should you continue on this path, you will definitely start to experience much more blockages. So again, there is a need for you to grow, Taurus. There is a need for you to really put in the work and not just say I've healed myself, but to genuinely go through that transition of healing yourself to be able to experience a more bountiful life. Now, your crowning energy here is the lover's card, having to make a decision, you guys. Again, for those of you guys that are married, for those of you guys that are, you know, in a long-term committed relationship, but you are unhappy or unfulfilled, now is the time to make those changes. Do not be surprised if there's endings coming because with these endings, this is much needed. Now, what, what's coming towards you on a subconscious level is the king of pentacles. So this is your card, Taurus. This is symbolizing structure. This is symbolizing financial stability. 
This is also signifying long-term commitment, a more bountiful type of relationship. If you can see in this card, there's grapes at the very top right here, right here. Um, the vines, it's all about, you know, luxury. It's all about love. It's about abundance, having more than enough. So again, put that effort. Even if you feel that this is something that, you know, if you experience that you've been in this long-term relationship and you've almost convinced yourself like, well, I've been married for 20 something years. I've been with them for 10 years. I've been with her for 25 years. Like, but if you're not genuinely happy, now is the time to make those changes, Taurus, if you really want to experience a new life. You cannot blame anyone else for the treatment that you've gotten. You cannot blame anyone else for not being able to get to a point of financial stability that you're wanting. The only one that is in your way at this present time is yourself. And that comes through, yes, the you know the the hard cold truth of understanding that we are our own creators and what we get is basically what we put in so again if you feel like you have to make a choice and that choice is something that for some of you guys it can almost seem like daunting not wanting to go through do not fear do not worry yourself into exhaustion Taurus, because you are only keeping yourself from happiness now, your next card here is the Three of Cups. Three of Cups symbolizing celebratory type of energy. Uh, for others of you, this is your advice card. So this is symbolizing follow your path, follow your truth, follow your happiness. If you're not happy, do not settle. No one should settle for any type of mediocre life. And when I say mediocre, I don't mean it in a disrespectful way. If you don't feel genuinely happy, what is it that you're doing to change your life? Are you expecting other people to make it easier for you? Are you getting financially um, financial assistance from other people? Are you getting comfortable with the idea of other people providing for you? Or are you really going through the trenches to make it happen? So this is something that you guys need to really take uh, into consideration and take the messages for what it is. Ultimately, what they're telling you is no one absolutely no one in this life has responsibility over your own life but yourself Taurus now your next card here is the wheel of the year the wheel of the year again this is the energy currently influencing you and this is definitely Jupiter's hand this is speaking directly about your happiness and wish fulfillment should you make a decision purely based on your happiness and following your truth you will quickly start to see the turnaround of events. Not only that, but you will also start to experience a bountiful energy that's coming towards you to assist you in making it more easier for you through this transition. Now, your next card here is the Page of Pentacles. Uh, slow and steady wins the race. Again, like I said, if you have children and you feel that that's the reason why you're bi binded to this relationship, and you're really trying to make it work or really putting effort towards it. Um, again, like I said, you know, I cannot express this enough. At the end of the day, I've heard this, I could say almost a million times, where people tend to say, well, I'm, you know, sticking it through because I don't want my child to grow up without a mother. I don't want my child to grow up without the father. Chances are you're hurting them more by staying in an unhappy marriage or a marriage where there's violence, a marriage where there is like no connection whatsoever because you're teaching your kids that it's okay to settle with this and more than likely they will follow those patterns. So again, be mindful about that, Taurus. And finally, the nine of swords could symbolize feeling like you're not in control, uh, feeling like there is a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of worry. Surrender to this energy, Taurus only surrendering, letting go of control, and having faith. You guys need to understand that, you know, with uh, Saturn, Jupiter, with the royal conjunction, as well as with the other planets that are currently taking place, like that of, um, what was that? Um, I was going to say something I completely forgot. Uranus, um, bringing wisdom and understanding, being able to, really step back and have faith in what your belief, whatever your belief system is, 
it, it's about that because there is, like I said initially in the beginning of this video, uh, it is about enlightenment. It is about the spiritual awakening that we're all experiencing, but it also speaks directly about understanding what is it that you believe in, that you have believed in, that has prevented you from growth. It could be the fact that you were taught and raised that once you get married, there's no divorce. Uh, it could be that you were taught that you had to deal with certain things that, um, you know, your wife or your husband beats you. It's okay. You deal with that um, because that's just how we were raised. If that's your situation, this is the understanding, the enlightenment, the awakening of understanding, no, I should not be treated this way. I should be treated, but nothing with love if I am in a loving relationship. And if I'm not, what the hell am I doing to get myself out of this situation? Okay. All right, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, very strong read for Taurus. All right, now we're going to go into Gemini. Spirit gets what are the messages for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January 2020? What are, new, what are the new beginnings coming towards them? What are the challenges that they need to overcome? What are the new opportunities coming towards them as well? Gemini, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirit gets what are the messages for Gemini? For the month of January, for the month of January 2020. All right, Taurus, your ninth house is uh, Saturn and Jupiter will be conjuncting in your ninth, sorry, in your eighth house. Um, and this has to do with relationship, uh, relationship connected with the seventh house marriage. Uh, so unionship is something that is going to take a very, very strong hold for you guys in the beginning of the year, uh, primarily emotional, deep intimacy and bonding, the exchange of strong emotional material that of the eighth house uh, ruled by Scorpio, perfect time to work out on our shadow side and Pluto. It's in its natural habitat makes us dealing with uh, wounding how I tried healing, you know, um, uh, psychoanalogical therapeutic healing. Can I, um, can I have enough? Can I trust in others, uh, trust in ourselves to face our wounds that need healing? So a lot, a lot of emotional dealing uh, for this month of January with you, Gemini's. For some of you guys, you may be already experiencing this. Um, like I said, it rules. Uh, the eighth house is very connected to that of the seventh house and it is marriage. But above all, uh, with the eighth house, this is talking about not just love per se, but more to do with deep intimacy. Uh, what is it? That, what are our trigger points? What is it that we, you know, subconsciously do to protect ourselves? Do we push people away? Do we try them? Do we test them? And it's the understanding and the realization of that. And what do we do with that knowledge once we understand, damn, I got to stop pushing people away. Um, I got to experience or accept love and accept being treated right and not often question, uh, are they expecting something in return from this love? So again, a lot of emotional workings, a lot of emotional healing, wounds from the past that stem from childhood. Um, were you taught that you had to provide something in order to receive love? Were you taught um, to give unconditional love? And if you weren't, what is it that you're doing in your now in this present time that is affecting your relationships, not just with partners, but with family? How do you deal with them? How do you connect with them? How do you express with them? Um, emotional connection. That That's really what you guys are going to be working through this month of January and for the coming months. Now, your first card here is the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands is feeling very, very uh, like you have to protect yourself, like you have to uh, put barriers. So it could be the realization of I have so many walls up. Uh, what do I do with that knowledge now that I know that I created those walls? What is it that I need to do or what do people need to do to show me that I can trust them in order to bring those guards down? 
Now your next card here is the nine of swords. So you guys have two nines, which is um, strangely enough, uh, your eighth house is being highlighted here going towards the nine, which is transition and transformation. Um, so a lot of, I think for a lot of you guys, you're going to be experiencing a lot of emotional, like being on a roller coaster um, and understanding, you know, again, like I said, the transition of why is it do I push people away? Why is it that I test them? Uh, when you're dating, when it comes to love and romance, do you test people? Do you push them to the maximum just to see um, that they will continuously keep fighting? And then once they don't and they give up, then you're restless. Then you're wondering, tossing and turning what I did wrong when you clearly know what you did wrong. So again, it's about understanding on a deeper level why we do the things that we do. Now, your next card here is the Six of Cups. A lot of emotional, uh, a lot of emotional transformation that's happening. Uh, again, it could be res uh, resolving or being able to resolve certain patterns, uh, certain, you know, being able to resolve like even past traumas. Um, it could even represent like a lot of healing. Uh, being able to forgive, being able to uh, let go of grudges, let go of things that were done to you in childhood. Let's move on from here. Let's. How do we make it better? How do we heal each other? How do we help heal each other? A lot of healing type of energy. And with the Six of Cups, this is directly connected to the family dynamic. So it could be, again, uh, dealing with marriage issues, dealing with, um, you know, heal. Or, or wounds that need to be healed uh, that perhaps you felt or your partner has felt that it hasn't completely healed or they haven't completely moved on from that. All of this will start to evolve in a very positive way because there is healing, there is communication, there's openness, being able to open up your heart, being able to open up how you've been feeling or how they've been feeling and how they've been dealing with the hurt and the pain that type of energy. So although it may seem daunting to you, Geminis, and it may feel a bit overwhelming sometimes, again, keep in mind the easiest way to deal with these energies is to let go of control, open your heart up, take a deep breath, and really go with the flow type of energy instead of resisting and continuously keep pushing people away. Now your next card here is the Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups um, could symbolize for some of you guys, um, again, like I said, not being able to deal with the emotions. Some of you guys may actually be triggered to run away. So if there's a confrontation or if there's something that you need to work through, for some of you guys, you may resort to escapism, hot partying up, drinking, etc. What they're telling you is don't fall into that. Don't, you know, sometimes we don't really want to work through healing energy because it's one of the most if not the most difficult energies to deal with because a lot of the times you will quickly find out that when you heal and when you're forgiving people you're not even forgiving them you're forgiving something about yourself that was a reminder to you of how they treated you or who they were but ultimately it directly affects you not them so again some of you guys may be tempted to run away from the situation. Uh, for others of you, if you're being confronted, you may decide just to not want to deal with it and back away from it. Or like I said, go ghost on them. Don't do this, you guys. Really work through these energies because it's not only transformative, but it's going to set you on this path of living your best life. So don't run away from the possibilities of that, okay? Now, your next card here is the world card, being able to, again, uh, transition into a new cycle in your life, uh, being able to understand or gain wisdom from this experience and understand that you have the potential of creating whatever it is that you want to cre create in your life. Uh, you have the blessings, you have the assistance, you have the help that is needed. Um, so again, surrender to this process. For some of you guys, travel may be involved for this coming six months. Uh, yeah, so I do see travel for some of you guys. Um, some of you guys may be traveling uh, across waters, meaning going to a different country.
For others of you, it could just be road trips, um, but I do see that unfolding in the coming months for you. For some of you guys, this can also represent purchasing or moving residency, going into a new home or purchasing your first home. Um, and again, travel, very, very highlighted here for you guys. Now, your advice card here, Gemini, is don't be scared to be happy. Don't be scared. Don't doubt yourself. Don't feel like you don't deserve to be happy or don't feel like happiness is not something that, you know, comes to everyone because it does. It's happiness is a choice. OK, and that's what they're telling you with the nine of cups as an advice card. Take the blessings, count your blessings, even if it's so sim simplistic as like being thankful for, you know, having a sweater to really, you know, cover yourself in this cold ass weather. Be grateful is the word and is the key here. Be thankful for that. Count your blessings and you'll start to experience more opportunities or situations that puts you in a very, very grateful type of energy. And this is definitely a good thing. This is positive. Your next card here is the Queen of Pentacles. So the Queen of Pentacles, this is the energy surrounding you. So you may be seeking out help or you may be reaching out to a uh, earth energy, could be a Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo for assistance, for guidance. Um, it, it's almost, for some of you guys, it, it could be a person that you genuinely do trust or that this person genuinely does put your best interest before their own. Um, this is a very positive energy and this is giving you a lot of wisdom, a lot of stability, and a lot of balance in your life. Uh, for some of you guys, this could be a person that you're trying to pursue or a person that you are emotionally invested in. For others of you, it could just symbolize, again, um, an energy where you respect them or admire them and you go to them for some type of assistance. Now, your next card here is the Hermit card. And this is in your hopes and fears. Again, do not run away from any lessons that we have to go through. Um, really internalize and understand, acknowledge, you know, if there's pain that you're still holding on to Gemini, acknowledge it. It's okay to acknowledge it. It's, it's not okay to ignore it because you suppress it. And then it keeps you from really being able to appreciate life on a deeper level. Um, for some of you guys, this could even represent your spirit guides being around you, trying to assist you, trying to give you wisdom, trying to give you enlightenment trying to guide you with this light uh trying to guide you towards the path that you should be walking on um gemini now your final card here is the knight of pentacles being able to um being able to receive an opportunity that comes to you for some of you guys this could be uh the solidifying of a business for others of you it could be uh paperwork signing um, like I said, I do see for some of you guys moving residency, so it could be the transition or the paperwork process of purchasing the home. I do see expansion, like I said, um, going into the next cycle of your life. But again, please keep in mind, if anything else, do not run away from this energy. Do not run away from the energy of really having to face certain things that we don't want to face. It is needed. It is necessary for your self-growth. All right? All right, Geminis, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now let's go with, uh, let me see, Cancer. All right. All right, Spirit Guides, what are the messages for Cancers? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus in regards to January 2020. What is unfolding before them? What new opportunities are coming towards them? And what is the challenge that they need to work on? For this month, Spirit Guides, Cancer, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, Cancers. So you're going to be experiencing Saturn and Jupiter's royal conjunction in your seventh house. Uh, seventh house is ruled, um, it's ruled by marriage, house of intimacy, house of long-term relationships. Jupiter and Saturn saying it's time to maintain long, deep connections. Saturn Give it another shot, <laughs> Jupiter blessing you uh, with that which is long-term and structure. Put yourself out there. Relationships will take a deeper and elevating those singles. Uh, so for those of you guys that are single, now is the time to look. 
Now is the time to go out there. Remember, Jupiter's bringing luck to you when it comes to love and romance. Um, for those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship, again, it's about maintaining that long connection or that deep connection. Um, and again, it could be like therapeutic healing. It could be like um, randomly, you know, professing each other's love uh, or professing what you feel for your partner. Uh, it's that deepening of a connection. Uh, those of you guys that are single or have been single for a while, uh, depending on where this is landing in your chart, uh, Cancer in your seventh house is definitely bringing to you a new partner, a new relationship that is going to be only that of long term that has longevity in it because Saturn will not allow anything other than that. So you guys can breathe easy. <laughs> Not dealing with any type of fuckboy energy or fuckgirl energy for sure. All right, let's see. Cancers, Cancers, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Oh, okay. Almost pop these cards out. All right, Cancer, your first card here. Five of Swords. Five of Swords, inner struggle. Struggles when it comes to communication. Uh, perhaps suppressed emotions, suppressed feelings things that were left unsaid. This is something that is going to be unfolding for you for the month of January. Now, your obstacle here is the Ace of Pentacles, a new beginning not starting off to the best. For some of you guys, it could signify not the best. Don't be scared. What I mean by, uh, for some of you guys, it could be a connection that already started, but there was like a, a miscommunication, something that went astray and perhaps the new beginning didn't happen as quickly as you would want do not fear aces are never obstacles it is coming up in the obstacle position but it only signifies that that new beginning or that something that new project that new opportunity uh, that was coming towards you uh, perhaps you feel like you almost missed it but do not worry it will manifest for you it's just going to take a little bit longer than expected okay for some of you guys, it could be a bit of delays in regards to communication. So it could be like um, uh, communicating in the work, uh, in the workplace. It could be like people misinterpreting or not getting the messages, not receiving emails on time, that type of energy. Uh, for others of you, this could symbolize if you were expecting some type of pay, some type of increase. It may be a little delayed, but it's still coming through for you guys. Now, your past and passing is the two of wands, partnerships, being able to really expand. For some of you guys, it could be even like talking to your partner about traveling or moving, uh, moving countries, going somewhere else and starting new. Um, and it, it's very receptive type of energy. So it's almost like making plans for the future. Now, your next card here is the eight of cups. So a lot of new beginnings coming for you. Eight of Cups is always walking from tension or walking from something that was not progress, uh, being able to detach yourself from that energy moving forward to better projects or better opportunities. Now, what's crowning your energy here is the Three of Wands. So again, a lot of travel. I do see travel for you, Cancers. Some of you guys may be traveling when you meet this person that's coming towards you. And it could be a person that turns out to be like, a long-term relationship, not long-term, sorry, a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A long dis a long distance relationship. <clears throat> sorry. It could signify a partnership or a relationship that starts off while traveling. Uh, for others of you, it could be that there is communication that doesn't come through as quickly. So uh, for some of you guys, it's a long distance relationships. Uh, but again, there is promise for something long term, as I do see making plans for the future. So even though if you are currently dealing or currently dating someone from a long distance relationship and it almost feels like there's no progress or it's not moving as quickly as you would want, do not fret and do not worry. They're telling you uh, the opportunity to be able to get on the same page or on the same time zone is coming up for you guys. Now, your next card here is the five of cups. So this is on a subconscious level, detaching yourself from feeling unworthy, detach yourself from feeling like you don't deserve to be happy cancer. You got to let go of your fears. For some of you guys, it could be that you let a person go and it could have been an earth sign, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, 
where perhaps you felt like you were more inclined for like having fun or traveling and you pretty much missed out on this opportunity with this uh, earth energy and now I see you wanting them back but again even if even if it was you, the one that pushed them away because you wanted to be in Rome free, there is still opportunity here. I still do see possibility, but it's going to come at a cost of you proving yourself to them. So it could be whatever immature type of energy was happening in the past. You got to really show them, prove to them, and they will give you that opportunity, uh, Cancer. Now, if this was you, the one that dealt with this energy and they left you because they wanted to be free and they wanted to roam free, I do see them coming back around. And again, like I said, having the opportunity to reconnect with them. But you need to understand, especially in this transition that we're, ha that we're having right now um, with the royal conjunction, you got to make sure that this is a person you genuinely want to put effort towards. If it's not, do not even bother cancer. Do not waste your time move on because there is a better opportunity for you now your advice card here is the knight of pentacles knight of pentacles signifying slow and steady wins the race those of you guys that have been single for quite a while there is almost resentment here there is a feeling of when will i be happy or do i not deserve to be happy and what spirit is telling you is yes you do deserve to be happy and you will be happy but the moment that you accept that you deserve to be happy, that's when the happiness comes to you. Do you understand? It's almost like taking responsibility and saying no one can make you happy but yourself. It starts within us. It starts in our heart. Are you grateful? Are you thankful for what you have in your life? Moving forward with that energy, it's going to uh, bring to you not only the relationship you're wanting, but also the wish fulfillment the being able to get there or, or receive whatever it is that you're expecting or whatever relationship, long-term or short, whatever it is that you're looking for right now. But it comes and it starts with the ultimate, which is that of understanding you are worthy. You do deserve this, Cancer. Now, your next card here is the Moon card. Moon card signifying a lot of you guys are really feeling the eclipse. Um, and again, like I said, because it's in because the royal conjunction is in your seventh house a lot of feelings a lot of emotions some of you guys even like being extremely sensitive if you are communicating with earth signs do not take things so personal the reason i say that is because earth signs are very known to be very practical if you've let them down in the past and all of a sudden you're communicating with them and you're wanting that love you're wanting to feel that you know, I have a possibility with them and they're very quick to respond to you, short answers, that type of energy. And you're like all in your feelings. Don't take it personal. If you've left them down in the past, you should be thankful they're texting you back. So be patient with this energy. Be patient with yourself, Cancer, because I do see you guys very much in your feelings, in your emotions. And it's again because of the eclipse and because of the conjunction that's happening right now. Now, your next card here is the King of Pentacles. Again, I see a lot of Earth energy here. Um, those of you guys that are wanting to attain or wanting to go towards an Earth energy, I do see them open. I do see them um, being emotionally available, meaning their heart chakra is not blocked. Um, but like I said, if you have done them wrong in the past, if you misguided them or perhaps led them to believe something that it was in, um, or you chose distance, not distance, sorry, you chose to travel or to go out and be in, be in about um, versus being with them or being in the relationship or building something, you have to understand that it is their right for you to want to prove yourself to them. Um, just like if they did this to you and now they're coming back around, you're going to test them for sure. So I do see it, you know, like you not making it that easy for them either. So just understand this. And be mindful about that, okay? Now, your next card here is the Empress card. So, for those of you guys that have been struggling when it comes to finances, when it comes to money, what they're telling you is that for January, you're definitely going to be experiencing a burst of energy when it comes to your finances. For some of you guys, the increase you've been expecting that you thought maybe wouldn't happen is coming through for you guys. For others of you, getting hired, 
uh, for a much better pay or being given an opportunity to to um, highlight something that you're naturally gifted at. For some of you guys, um, it could be like finding out that you're really good at whatever creative outlook it is. Meaning for those of you guys that are authors, for those of you guys that are mu musicians, for those of you guys that create music, there's a lot of connections, a lot of um, networking is what they're telling me. And this is going to help you break a lot of obstacles that you've been experiencing in the past. You're going to be able to experience it um, in a very positive light, in a very positive aspect. It's all about networking for you guys. If you guys are trying to break through to actually be able to experience uh, financial bliss. Okay. All right, my lovelies. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now let's go on to the next sign. Okay, Spirit Guides, what are the messages for Leos? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January, January 2020. What's coming towards them? What opportunities are coming towards the Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What challenge are they currently experiencing and need to work on for the month of January? And what is unfolding before them, Spirit Guides? What are the messages for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay, Leos. Leo, the conjunction is happening in your sixth house. Um, this is the house of work, duty, responsibilities. Saturn loves this house, you guys, um, because it's very natural to, the, to Saturn. Um, working hard, but most importantly, having fun while working doing work that matters also the house of helping others house of mission and service resonates a lot with the 10th house putting extra work to attain a mastery so for a lot of you leos you may be already experiencing this type of energy um and, and this also highlights being able to um find the passion or find what drew you to the profession that you're in or what you're doing in the present um pretty much that pays you in the present time what is it that that you the reason why you started it's all about having fun while making money um if this is not something that you are already experiencing you need to understand that the easiest route to do this is to learn to have fun so a lot of you guys are going to ask me well work is work right <laughs> <laughs> which is true but what they're saying here is <clears throat> it's natural for saturn to be in your in the sixth house and because of the responsibility um you know obviously saturn is a very very responsible type of planet and it's all about hard work which is in fact what the sixth house is for you leo but it also signifies enjoying your surroundings if you are currently experiencing uh, like being very triggered at work or being around a lot of negative people or people that are just, you can't stand them because they just go on and on and on being very negative and complaining about everything in their life. The reason why you're so irritable, Leo, is because the conjunction is bringing about in you wanting to feel the balance in the workplace. And the only way to do this is to experience it in a positive, in a positive way which is that of having fun while working, uh, communicating in a positive way, and people that tend to be very like bubbly, um, which probably in the past tend to annoy you. Now you're going to start experiencing like just wanting to be around those people that make you laugh, um, that you could really enjoy yourself. And again, like I said, if you feel like you're being very irritable, it has a lot to do with the fact that you're just not, you're really not wanting to deal with people that are extremely negative right now because it's all about finding the balance in the workplace. So that's going to be very important for you guys. Now, you have here the karma card. We were just talking about this in the beginning of the video. A lot of you guys are going to be experiencing a lot of blessings coming to you uh, in regards or directly connected to your past good karma. Anything you've ever done for people, anything that you kept hidden or um, like you went out of your way to help or facilitate something for someone uh, without really having the need to announce it to anyone. 
all of that's going to start to come up for you to actually take that credit. So it's blessings that are coming your way that are through your good karma or things that you have done in past lives uh, that is now almost like Saturn uh, telling Jupiter, you know, I have really put effort or I really put really hard work or I've done my mission or I'm working on my mission. Um, and this is my, you know, this is my karmic debts that you owe me and Jupiter saying, you know what, I'm going to start releasing your good karma. So you're going to start to experience almost an energy of just opportunities coming your way out of nowhere. For some of you guys, uh, it, it could be an overwhelming feeling of gratitude. But again, it's based off of your own merit, uh, Leo. Now, your next card here is the Six of Cups. And this is in your obstacle position. So for some of you guys, it could be experiencing um, imbalance, a bit of imbalance in the home life. Uh, for some of you guys, it could even represent like past connections from the past. Uh, having the need or coming up now, having to heal through that. Um, it could be people that did you wrong in the past that you went above and beyond to help them. And now it almost seems like Saturn is teaching them a lesson. So they're trying to reach out to you, trying to make it up or trying to apologize for what they did in the past that was, you know, nothing but ungratefulness. So do not close yourself off because you're still hurt or because they still have some type of effect over you, Leo. If they are reaching out to you, allow them to mend the fences, not for them, but for yourself. You don't want to carry that resentment or you don't want to carry that anger or that feeling of, you know, how dare they uh, just let it go. Let it slide. Um, like I said, not for them, but for yourself, Leo. Now, your next card here is the four of swords. And this is in the past and passing position. So for some of you guys feeling a bit not really wanting to communicate or not wanting to um be very social, perhaps is something you've been experiencing or, or had been experiencing the past month, but that's quickly changing. Like I said, a, a lot of communication in the workplace. If you are surrounded by people that are extremely negative or are nothing but like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Nothing but people that just like to steer up shit at work, stay away from that. Like really stay away from it. Uh, don't invest your time in that. Even if you, you know, don't say nothing rude, um, but don't, you know, allow them to think that you're okay with that only because, like I said, it's going to be very important to find that balance for this month in your workplace. And the only play and the only way not to be irritable is to not participate in any negative talk, any rumors or anything like that. So just push them away. What they're telling you is stay to yourself if you feel like you can't trust anyone at the moment. Stay to yourself, anything that has been, anything they've been doing that is not good, anything they've been saying that is not good, the, the royal conjunction is definitely going to bring about those people that are starting rumors or things clearing the air, but then it also puts other people in their place that they should have been put on for a while. Um, so again, just steer away from all that talk. And this could even be like in your home life, uh, in your family dynamic, like, relatives hating or anything like that let that shit slide ignore it trust me if you feel like someone even around you or a family member or someone has been you know down talking you or saying things that they shouldn't be saying don't even participate in the like back-to-back -back talking shit towards each other don't do none of that leo it's not necessary saturn will take care of that and they will put them in a position where they're going to be left feeling like idiots because it, it's almost like they will be put on blast uh, very quickly. So again, don't don't participate in anything like that. Now, your next card here is the Ten of Pentacles. So the Ten of Pentacles does promise stability. It also promises um, a lot of energy that has to do with abundance, success, uh, being able to get that higher position, being able to be offered a uh, a particular project or something that they are not very easy to give to other people. They will be relying uh, their trust on you, Leo, because only you can make that happen. Only you can make their vision come alive or only you can be able to close that deal. So I do see a lot of supervisors, a lot of higher people uh, really relying on you. 
Um, and again, this is definitely going to bring a burst of confidence in you, uh, Leo. So definitely, uh, for some of you guys, this can also represent being able to uh, get a raise or be receiving some type of bonus. If you have been experiencing or wanting a bonus, uh, but you thought maybe it wasn't going to come through, it's definitely coming through for you guys in January. Now, your next card here is the Six of Wands. A lot of attention, a lot of people uh, really talking about your effort or your achievements. Um, I do see a lot of people looking towards you, Leo. Again, this is nothing. I am not surprised. When I see the Six of Wands and the Ten of at the Ten of Pentacles with the not wanting to communicate, this is signifying to me people that are just talking smack because they see you doing good or because they see you growing, Leo. So not surprised at all. Uh, like I said, Jupiter and Saturn blessing you from with your hard work, with the determination. If people in your workplace have, you know, relied on you to such a point where they really literally... Um, just have exhausted you because they solely depend on you uh for this month of january you're definitely going to be experiencing all those rewards coming back to you again uh for some of you guys they could even be getting a position that falls out of heaven uh specifically for you uh, because someone was either not up to par or they couldn't do it the way you do it uh leo so definitely do not be surprised if um a job or a particular job or project is handed to you. Now, your next card here is the death card, major transformation. So I do see that for January, and I want to say all the way to February, you're going to be experiencing a lot of opportunities when it comes to money, uh, opportunities that are going to bring to you, um, that are going to bring to you more money, more increase, more abundance, but more than anything, it's going to really ignite the passion in you for what you do, Leo. So this is definitely a good season for you guys with the transformation happening and this is unbeknownst to you. So this could signify, again, what they were telling me right now, don't be surprised if a job is completely like handed down to you because whoever has that job either is getting fired or uh, is caught doing something they're not supposed to be doing and they give that opportunity to you. And who better... To make it happen than you leo now your next card wow is your own card leo so your advice card is be yourself be in your power leo really really believe in yourself uh, i feel that you guys are going to be radiating a lot of confidence uh it's almost like the universe is whispering to you exactly what to do or what steps to take to be able to get you to progress it's almost like they're really rooting for you and again we go back to that of karmic energy that is any good karmic energy that you've done in the past is definitely coming through in this reading for you guys now your next card here is the queen of swords queen of swords this is uh, the energy currently surrounding you um a lot of um here's the thing with the queen of swords we have two queens here so this is signifying to me again what we were talking about initially um, people really paying attention to you, Leo. Um, it's almost like for some of you guys, you've been either away from the social like gathering or very on the down low or very low key. And I do see a lot of people really trying to, I don't want to say intrude, but really look into your life or see what you're doing or see how great you're doing type of energy. And with the queen of swords, what they're telling you here is, um, Anyone that's coming towards you from the past with the Six of, of Cups here, uh, from the past that did you wrong, um, forgive them if they reach out to you. Like, just let it be known to them. Like, you know, what's done, it's done. Uh, let's just bend the fence and move on from here. But they're also telling you don't completely trust them, okay? Um, so, again, just let it, let it slide. Forgive them for your sake, not for their sake. For your sake. And you will continue moving forward and continue progressing while you have all these people wondering about your life. But don't let them too close from a distance. Now, your next card here is the Eight of Pentacles, really putting effort towards manifestations, really putting effort towards really finding financial stability. What they're telling me is that for a lot of you guys, you're going to be experiencing, I want to say from 
January the 12th all the way to uh, January the 25th, even the first week of February, um, you're going to be experiencing like a like a strike or a streak of good luck um, in anything that has to do with investments or money. Uh, so for some of you guys, uh, this could even represent like uh, if you have a tendency to once once in a while, I'm not telling you guys to prostitute. Uh, I'm not telling you guys to prostitute your luck, not at all. But what they are saying is that having a strike or a streak of luck uh, in gambling, in anything that has to do with games of chance, um, I do see that being highlighted here for you guys. Now, your final card here is the Two of Swords. And the Two of Swords symbolizing to me being able to see people for who they really are. I know that you Leos have a beautiful heart. You guys are very, you know, genuine people. And when you guys love, you guys love very deeply. But if you are in a situation, um, again, of someone that hurt you in the past, and this could be directly connected to family dynamic, someone from your family or someone that's hurt you in the past that reaches out and wants to come back around, Forgive them for their own sake, but do not trust them. Um, they've let you down once, you know. Uh, don't carry the resentment in your heart, but what they're telling you is see them really for who they are. Um, I know wishful thinking. Sometimes we can think, you know, this person changed, but what they're telling you here is that change only comes to those that really are willing to put in the effort to change a habit or something about themselves. If they have not done that or if they're not willing to do that, it's okay. Um, but understand that you and you alone, Leo, have control of your own life. You may not control other people, but you have control over your own life and only you can react to certain situations yet still be in control. So it has a lot to do with how you react to the situation um, that either takes away from your power or gives you power. All right? So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Leos, now let's go on to the next sign. All right, the next sign is going to be Virgos. Oh. Spirit guides, what are the messages for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What is unfolding before them? What opportunities are coming towards them? And what challenges will they be working or having to experience for this month of January 2020? Spirit guides, what are the messages for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January 2020? Wow. Wow. All right, Virgos. All right, uh, the royal conjunction is going to be in your fifth house. Uh, the fifth house is the house of play and house of pleasures. Everything heightened. Jupiter loves this house. Um, Jupiter is all about having fun and having an awesome time. And the house of play uh, obviously is very like natural habitat for Jupiter to be in. Um, but it comes through natural need of discipline with Saturn being there. Uh, Saturn, the discipline of relaxation, remembering what is it to be childlike and enjoying taking some time to smell the roses. So for a lot of you guys, uh, you may be experiencing feeling like you have to plan accordingly to be able to take some time off or to be able to let loose, um, as this is highly needed with Saturn being in your fifth house, uh, it comes through uh, in a disciplining, a disciplinary, uh, disciplinary way. If I'm saying it right, I'm probably not. Anyways, what it symbolizes and the best way of describing this, it could represent as an example. If you're experiencing that you are a bit ungrounded or not really having clarity of mind, anything like that. It could be that there is a need to repose, a need for rest. And the easiest way to do that is to put effort towards some type of meditation. 
uh, taking 15, 20 minutes of meditation every day to ground and anchor yourself. It comes through discipline. Meditation may not come easy to you, but it's something that you need to do with Saturn being there. The more you practice, the more you're able to master it, the more you're able to uh, use it as a tool to be able to help you with the grounding and with the anchoring of yourself and being able to see more clearly, more focused, being able to uh, really attain those goals that you're wanting to set out, but it comes through discipline, okay? Now, your first card here is the justice card, and the justice card uh, serves as a current situation, meaning um, you may be experiencing an imbalance, which is why I'm telling you guys about the meditation. If you feel like you're overworking so much or you don't have any time, um, any downtime anyways, or you're not having enough time to spend with friends or you're not really being social because most of your time is going towards work, again, Saturn is telling you, you have to, you, there's no shortcuts to working long hours. There's no shortcuts to not being able to uh, have a social life. Um because work is of Saturn. You need to put in that work right now. But Jupiter is going to bless you with a bountiful of blessings that comes through finances, obviously more money, more pay. Um, but at the same time, you need to discipline yourself to be able or to be um, to be able to experience a more balanced life. So therefore, having the need to, like I said, uh, include med med uh, meditation in your lifestyle, include uh, being able to have some type of ritual, like once you get out of work, that is going to help you uh, be grounded and at the same time uh, be able to spend time with friends or with family members if you're married or you're in a long-term relationship. Perhaps that could be something that you're really having difficulty with right now because the justice card symbolizes um, having to work through balance and the emperor card here is your obstacle. So it's all about structures. So for some of you guys, it could be that you're feeling like work really has taken over your life. And for some of you guys, you may be experiencing that because you're so much at work uh, and when you get home, you're tired and you don't really want to spend time with your partner. So it's almost like an imbalance. It's, it's in exchange, getting something in exchange for something else. But with Saturn being there and Jupiter, it's not going to come easy. But what they're telling you is learn to be structured. Do not be irresponsible right now, Virgo. If, you know, like I said, if you're really working long hours and you're seeing it almost as like an inconvenience to your life because you're not really able to go out or, or whatever it is, we all have to go through that, through that aspect of our life at some point. Now is your time to go through that. The best thing I can tell you is find the balance. Um, and if the balance is you're not able to party as much as you would want, that's fine and dandy, but at least take 10 to 20 minutes every day uh, meditating because this is going to help you recharge your batteries, okay? It's, it's about finding, it's about finding uh, what you're really passionate about or what's really getting you from point A to point B. And through that transition of doing, of being able to do that, finding the structure that works specifically for you. Now, your next card here is the Six of Wands. A lot of promise, a lot of opportunities coming for you guys, a lot of growth in the finance department. For some of you guys, it could be getting a higher ranking position. For others of you, uh, getting a position where there it's an authoritative type of energy, perhaps something you've never done. Perhaps you're scared. Perhaps this is um, intimidating because you feel like maybe you can't you can't make it. Maybe you feel like uh, you wouldn't be able to you know to handle this type of responsibility. That could be the reason why you feel very imbalanced. But what Spirit is telling you, it's now or never, Virgo. Jump on that opportunity and really grab a hold of it. This is really going to impact you not just for six months but for the coming year. So if you feel that you are given an opportunity and it may be scary and challenging challenge yourself or go only through this will you be able to experience growth now your next card here is the two of swords 
Two of Swords symbolizing um, not wanting to see a certain situation or not wanting to view uh, a situation for really what it is. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Libra. For others, you may be dealing with an Aries. Um, what they're telling me right now is that for some of you guys, you may be experiencing um, a partner or someone that you were genuinely interested in. Uh, that perhaps is uh, traveling or will be traveling for a coming month. Um, and you're still being hopeful. Or you're still wanting to be hopeful in this situation. Uh, but what they're telling you is that you need to see things clearly for what they are. Are they going for growth? Are they going towards an achievement of something? And if they are, instead of you sitting there and waiting for them, Virgo, what is it that you're doing with your life that is going to render you results as well? What is it that you're working towards? What is it that you're trying to achieve? Work on yourself. This is this has been a theme for you guys. I want to say all this year. Um, and see, here's here's the thing. You have the sun card here. So the sun card is what's radiating. This is what your crown energy is. And what they're telling you is stop stop focusing on the negative of, of what's going wrong in your life and start focusing on what's going good in your life, Virgo. Um, be grateful, be thankful for whatever situation it is that you feel there's an urgency to fix, let it go. It will work out itself. What Spirit is telling you right now is that you need to put effort towards yourself. You need to grow for yourself. You need to, uh, again, like I said, put energy, put focus towards what you're trying to achieve, um, really focusing Here's the thing. What they're telling me is that for the month of January and February, it's about me for Virgos, okay? So for Virgo, it's about me. What is it that I'm doing that is helping me progress? What am I doing to get me, like I said, from point A to point B? What is it that I'm working on myself to make myself a better partner for someone else? It's about putting in the work with Saturn and Jupiter, bringing you the opportunity, the relationship the longevity of a relationship or the opportunity of a higher ranking position, it comes to you through hard work. So don't give up now, Virgo. Now is the time to put in that work. Abundance, success, stability is what's coming towards you, Virgo. If you guys are looking for a relationship because you feel like, I've been single for a long time, well, Virgo, is it because you tend to go after people that you know you shouldn't be going after? Because this could represent the singlehood card, but the singlehood card comes through a decision. So it could be that you're choosing to pick the wrong people. You're choosing to give the opportunity to people that don't deserve it. But do not worry, as I do see a relationship coming towards you that is going to be able to create something long term. But you need to work in yourself right now, Virgo. Like I said, the month of January is I. What am I doing uh, to get me to this relationship? What am I doing? Um, what am I working towards? Or are you working at all towards something? And if you're not and you're just wishful thinking, Spirit is telling you, no, no, no. Now is the time. Now is the time to connect to your energy and that of higher spirit. Stop self-doubting yourself, Virgo. You deserve to be loved. Whoops. Now, for those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship, the message is the same. If you're experiencing like you're in a relationship, but almost feeling like you're not in a relationship, like you're alone, um, what Spirit is telling you here is that you have no structure in this relationship or they've tested you, they've put you to the ringer and you just kept dealing with it, dealing with it, dealing with it until they came to the realization that they pretty much could get away with anything because you're going to put up with it. What Spirit is telling you is take the blindfolds off, be honest with yourself, be true to yourself. Your advice card here is the Knight of Cups. 
love yourself. That's your theme. Work on you and love yourself, Virgo. The rest will take care of itself. Ace of Cups. This is the energy that's coming towards you. It's a new love offer. A new opportunity. A new way to connect. See, what they're showing you right now, Virgo, is that the opportunity for your happiness is attainable for this 2020. But what is it that you're doing right now to get you there? Put that work in. Really put in that work. The rest, the universe is going to take care of itself. And it will bring you that person you're looking for. Or it will bring you the relationship you're wanting or the stability that you're wanting, the success that you're wanting. You will attain it. But you got to be smart about it. Now is not the time to be all up in your feelings, Virgo. Now is the time to think with your head. All right? Beautiful reading. Now let's go on to the next reading. And this is going to be Libra. All right, Spirit Guides, what are the messages for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January 2020? Spirit Guides, what are the messages for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? It's coming towards them. What challenges will they be working through for the month of January? And what is unfolding before them, spirit guides? Libra, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. All right, Libras. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. All right, Libras. Um, the royal conjunction is going to be transitioning in your fourth house. Uh, fourth house is the house where you live physically. Are you happy? Have you settled? Um, do you have a project going on? Something about working in your home, remodeling, time to clean up, stop hoarding, perhaps feeling disconnected. Uh, some wanting to be closer to family. So all of this rules the fourth house. Uh, for a lot of you guys, you may be experiencing that already where you're like, you know what? Am I saving this for later or am I just hoarding? <laughs> Is it becoming an issue? Uh, and it, it's almost the feeling of like wanting to purge and get uh, things out in the physical to get things out of your home so that you can clear that energy or clear that space. Uh, because again, the fourth house does rule your physical house. For some of you guys, you may be wanting or desiring to move away, um, to move back or get closer to your family. Are you living from a distance from your family? Are you missing them? Uh, do you understand or are you realizing that perhaps you're much better or happier if you're around them, if you're closer to them? Um, for those of you guys that recently got engaged or recently got married, uh, it could be a feeling of, you know, are you nesting well, basically? Um, for those of you guys that have settled, you're questioning yourself and you're asking yourself, are you better? Are you, Do you feel emotionally fulfilled? Are you happy where you're at at this point in your life? And if you're not, um, there's a lot of realization with this. There is a lot of planning for the future. So you may already start to experience this. Like I said, some of you guys working uh, with a project in your home, uh, remodeling, uh, cleaning up. Um, for some of you, you may directly be feeling like really disconnected from people, like you can't really uh, connect with them on a deeper level. And this could be with your partner as well. Um, so the only way to feel like you're closer is going to be working through the fourth house, which is that of 
you know, working within a project in your home, uh, like I said, releasing anything that you don't need anymore, uh, tossing things away, donating things. Uh, all of this is on a physical aspect, but ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to find um, your nest or you're trying to nest or you're trying to be closer uh, to family, relatives, your partner. And the only way to do that is to purge yourself from things that are uh, physically, that you feel physically are blocking you. Um, so all of that is going to be playing out for you guys for the month of January. Now, your first card here is the hanged man. So again, feeling restricted, feeling like, um, feeling like there is a stuckness or an energy of stuckness. And it could be because you're physically wanting to move about, move the energy or move yourself. Um, so all of this is, again, like I said, keep in mind that this is going to be playing out in your fourth house. Uh, so for some of you guys, it could be actually uh, having the desire to move away or to change residency. Uh, some of you guys may already be planning that. Um, a lot of internalization is what's happening right now with you guys. Now your next card here, the Eight of Pentacles. So this is your obstacle, and the obstacle here is having or not having not having sorry um could signify the blockage of being able to work towards something uh so there is frustration perhaps you haven't seen growth or much growth when it comes to finances for others of you perhaps at this point in your life you feel like you should have been at some point in your life and maybe you haven't achieved it those of you guys that are single perhaps you thought by now you would have been married for others of you it could just symbolize feeling like you're restricted in some aspects of your life, whether it's in finances, whether it's in the profession sector. Um, did you think that by now you would have gone up the scale at work? Uh, if you're unhappy where you're at right now, what is it that you're doing to change that? What is it that you're working um, or trying to work through to be able to get you to the, ne the next aspect of your life? Now, your past and passing position here is the Queen of Swords. So I see you guys a lot of self-doubting. I think that for some of you Libras, um, it could be doubting yourself or it could be like putting yourself down, uh, like really criticizing yourself very harshly. And what Spirit is telling you is that we all, uh, we all have goals, aspirations, desires that we want to accomplish. And because as an example, if you've created a deadline or something and you've gotten to that point, it doesn't mean that you will not attain it or that you will not achieve it, Libra. It just symbolizes that for some of us, it takes a little bit longer for us to be able to get to that finish line. So try not to be so harsh on yourself or so hard on yourself and continue working towards achieving whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Now, your next card here is the Ace of Swords. So there is new beginnings. Uh, new beginnings in regards to communication as well. Being able to communicate in a different way that is going to be able to uh, really come through what you're trying to express um, on a mental level to that of the physical, which is through speech. So for some of you guys, um, it could be representing, like really speaking your, your truth, being completely honest or putting the cards on the table, letting people know um, what it is that you expect. For some of you guys, it could be uh, having an epiphany um, or getting to a point in your relationship where you feel like you could be completely honest and speaking that truth is going to bring you closeness with your partner, um, even if it could be in situations or things that they may not agree with, but they can respect. Um, it's kind of like agree to disagree type of energy. So again, what they're telling you is be honest with yourself for this month, Libra, um, and try the best you can not to be so harsh on yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself and be patient. If you're trying to achieve or have been working towards achieving a goal, um, like I said, don't frustrate yourself. Uh, you will get there. Continue putting the effort and don't give up. Now, your next card here is the Ten of Cups. And this is your crowning energy. So there is emotional fulfillment coming through for you guys. For some of you guys, it could be, like I said, working towards an achievement, some type of goal or some type of uh, aspiration that you've been wanting to make happen. And it will come through as I do see emotional fulfillment for you guys. 
Um, but again, like I said, try not to be very harsh on yourself. Now, your next card here is the King of Wands. So some of you guys may be dealing with um, Fire Energy, Sagittarius, um, Aries, or Leo. Um, and what they're telling me here with the King of Wands is for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship or married, perhaps the partner is trying to pursue a new profession or something that they haven't done in the past and it's probably you, the one that's being a little bit harsh on them or perhaps like feeling a bit like dreadful. Am I going to have to carry them until they pretty much get on their own two feet type of energy? There is something about being tested. Um, so it could be like the partner wanting to go back to school. It could be them trying to get some type, some type of trade, something that is going to take them um, that is going to take some time to achieve uh, with education, or it could represent like getting a training or something for a different type of job. And there's like fear connected to this, but it's not fear that you don't trust them. It more, it has more to do with fear of, um, what if it doesn't go the way they're expecting kind of energy. So what they're telling you is try the best you can to support them and be there for them emotionally. Um, it's okay to have some type of fear or reservations about what may come from that. But ultimately what they're telling you is be completely honest, be completely honest with them, be transparent with them. Um, you know, don't baby them, obviously be practical about it. If it's something that <laughs> they're not being very, um, they're not really taking the time to analyze and they're just kind of rushing and going with the flow. Um, if this is something that to you, you would consider this, they should think about a little bit more, you know, a little bit more with more time, uh, speak your mind and be honest with them and let them know, like, you know, that you have certain reservations that you're all for supporting them and being there for them 100%, but that they have to make sure this is something that they really want to do and that they're actually going to be completing it. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be with relationships. This could be in regards to the family dynamic as well. It could be a child, a child that wants to change a career. Perhaps they're in, in college and all of a sudden they're telling you that they're wanting to change the career, that they're wanting to take something completely different from what they've been studying. Again, it's okay to have reservations, but be completely honest with them and transparent. Let them know <laughs> not to take this very lightly and to really put... Uh, their mind to it before they make that decision. And the reason I say that is because whether it's a partner or whether it's like a son, a daughter uh, that is wanting to change some type of from what they are used to or what they were going for, I do see that there's going to be some type of regret attached to this. So again, just, you know, and it could be regret. It doesn't necessarily mean that they won't be successful at it. But it just means that passionately wise or passionate wise, uh, they may find that they're not as enthusiastic about it as they thought initially. Now, your next card here with your advice card is the King of Pentacles. So the King of Pentacles being practical, being practical towards achieving goals or being practical towards that of the home that you're trying to build Libra. Um, again, try. And here's the thing. For those of you guys that recently got married or recently got engaged or will be moving in with your partner, be very careful when it comes to finding a home or finding an apartment or moving to a different residency. Be careful with your finances. So what I mean by that is be practical. Don't go for what you would wish you wanted. Go for what you know you're able to afford because I don't want to see you guys experiencing um delays or issues when it comes to finances because you're overspending or because you're going for something that you would want versus being more practical in the sense of this is what we could afford right now okay so be be careful with that now your next card here is the nine of swords and the knight of swords is signifying your hopes and fears a lot of anxiousness and worry about the future but what they're telling you is don't worry libra you will start to see opportunities start to come through uh, wherever you've been experiencing blockages, that's quickly going to be released and you're going to be able to experience uh, more opportunities coming your way with less resistance, 
whatever it is that you've been working on, whether it's a project or something that just didn't take off as quickly as you would want, that's quickly going to be changing for you guys. So definitely very, very positive reading. All right, my lovelies, let's go to the next reading. All right, our next reading is going to be Scorpios. Let's see what spirit has. Whoa. Let's see what spirit has for you guys for the month of January 2020. Spirit guides, what are the messages for Scorpio? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus for the month of January 2020. <sighs> what opportunities are coming towards them, spirit guides? What challenges will they be having to overcome for this month? And what is quickly unfolding before them? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, one more. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay. All righty. All right, Scorpios, uh, the Royal Conjunction is going to be in your third house. Uh, third house is all about language, speaking, get your ideas out into the world, Scorpio. You are capable of achieving more than where you're at right now and expanding. Do it now. Jupiter says it's time to make into a reality. With Saturn, stop procrastinating and start doing what you are passionate about. So a lot of you guys are going to be experiencing um, almost a pull or something that is like on a spiritual level, pulling you towards some type of achievement, some type of new pursuit. For some of you guys, it could be even changing career paths. And all of this has to do with, again, being truthful to yourself and making uh, your dreams or your desires manifest with Saturn into reality. Um, also, Jupiter telling you, hey, get off your butt and make it happen. Don't just sit there and talk about the business you want to start. Don't just sit there and converse with your friends and with your loved ones what you're wanting to achieve. What is it that you're doing now that is setting, you know, setting foot towards achieving that? Um, it's really putting in the work with uh, Saturn there, but with Jupiter as well. Now is the time to do. Now is the time to do so and to start doing what you're really passionate about because only that will render you not only financial stability, but the blessing of Jupiter starting off to a very good start. Now, the cards that popped out right now was the Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is having a lot of ideas. I see you guys experiencing like, um, like even showering, like while you're showering, an idea pops up in your head and you really kind of mold it over and think about it. But you're often questioning yourself, Scorpio, like self-doubting, self, self-doubting, sorry, self-doubting yourself. Um, what is it that you're doing? Like, are you really paying attention to what spirit is telling you? And because the third house is ruled with language, this can also signify how spirit get communicate with us. So again, if you are getting like a spark of ideas that are just coming to you out of nowhere, um, this is spirit's way to tell you, are you following your path? Are you following your truth? Are you being honest with yourself? What is it that you're doing? You have so much to give to the world uh, that you're capable of achieving so much more. Are you expanding? Are you challenging yourself, Scorpio? Now, with the Seven of Cups could symbolize having a lot of ideas, uh, really being on that creative aspect in the present. Um, for some of you guys, it could even be like having a lot of opportunities to make uh, different ways of making money in your life. Now, the obstacle here is the Ten of Swords, and this Ten of Swords sing signifies um, resisting change. So what they're telling you is don't resist change. Listen to your intuition. Listen to your intuition because this is definitely what's going to bring you towards not just your happiness, not just your financial stability, but this is really what's going to trigger you to really ignite that passion where you feel like perhaps you've lost it or perhaps you're not as you know passionate as you once were. Now is the time to really take on that energy and the best is yet to come for you, Scorpios. Again, like I said, finding hundreds of ways to make money. 
um, is what they're telling me. So pay attention to your ideas and run with them. Make them happen. Hey, it, what's the worst that can happen? It, nothing comes from it. That's fine. You go on to the next one. I guarantee you that if you start paying more attention to your intuition, Scorpio, you're going to quickly start to be experiencing a lot of blessings when it comes directly connected to your finances. Um, you guys have to keep in mind third house rules language. This is how we communicate. So for those of you guys that are in the business of uh, customer service, for those of you guys that are in sales, for those of you guys that are in um, in business in regards to connections and networking, all of this is momentum because this is really opening doors for you guys and bringing to you guys new manifestations of ways of making money. So this is definitely, definitely a good thing. Now, your next card is the Eight of Pentacles. Long hours, really putting long hours towards the mastery of something, towards the mastery of making, you know, um, that business grow. Uh, putting more effort and energy towards getting your business or your brand out there. Um, for those of you guys that are in the creative outlook, those of you guys that paint, those of you guys that do poetry, those of you guys that do music, now is the time to really start networking is what they're telling you because this is going to really open doors for you guys. Now, your next card here is success. You have the six of wands celebratory type of energy people really receiving your energy in a very positive light and people even people that genuinely care for you wanting to make way for you in this in this world really helping you setting putting you on that road towards that connection perhaps it's a friend that introduces you to someone that is going to help you expose your brand or that is going to help you uh get more clientele or that is going to help you uh, bring more people towards your business. Now is the time to do so. For those of you guys that have been working or went back to college and you know, you're know you trying to achieve or trying to graduate or trying to pick up a new trade, don't give up. What they're telling you is you will see the end of this manifestation and it's going to bring to you rewards that are going to bless you for the next coming year. Now your next card here is the four of swords. So for those of you guys that are really in the pursuit of financial stability and success for this coming year. Meditation and visualization is going to be something very important for you guys. This is really what's going to anchor you guys and pull you towards the manifestations of longevity. So when I hear that, this is signifying to me everything that has to do with the law of attraction, everything that has to do with uh, the metaphysical, that of creating our own life or co-creating. So now is the time to really start to put effort towards that. Meditate, really tune into your guiding system, our navigation that we have with our intuition. All of this is going to render you long-term results. Now, your advice card here is, again, listen to your intuition, Scorpio. This is your card. This is really bringing to you, this is like almost... A blessing because I see you guys really opening up, listening to your intuition, but at the same time, really being able to connect with people where you make them feel so comfortable, where you make them feel like they can genuinely trust you, even if it's clients that you've never worked for before. It's like they're really trusting you. Those of you guys that work for a company, supervisors, really like you're really showing your capabilities and what they're telling you is they are watching you, Scorpio. They are definitely taking note. They understand that you're making this happen or they understand that you are the most ideal candidate to get their business going. So for some of you guys, it could even be an offering, an offering of a new position, a higher ranking position, a position of authority, nonetheless, that is coming to you because you've earned it, because you've put that work in, because you're not giving up. Your next card here is the Page of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles does represent, for some of you guys, children, um, it could represent having to deal with balance, balance in the home life as well as in your profession. For some of you guys, those of you guys that perhaps have children, stop working. It could be that you're going to be experiencing January, perhaps where you're thinking about going back to work or wanting to start uh, working again and, you know, finding the balance or trying to find the balance between your home life and your professional life. 
don't give up. Don't feel like, you know, you've been out of the game for a while. No, now is the time to make those transitions, those changes that are going to bring you um, longevity, long-term success. Now, your next card here is the King of Wands. So the King of Wands could symbolize uh, fire energy, uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. For some of you guys, it could be an offer that comes through from this King of Wands, which is an opportunity coming to you. Again, like we said, making money on the side. For some of you guys, it could be doing um, like something that is connected with communication, presentations, uh, singing, um, uh, what else? Um, doing speeches uh, or communicating. Uh, it could be through webinars, anything like that. Um, I do see those being very highlighted for you guys for this coming month. Whoops. And your next card here is the Six of Pentacles. Balance, give and take. All right? Now, I do want to mention, with the Six of Pentacles and the Six of Wands, I do see success in regards to your business or in your finances. But this Six of Pentacles could symbolize having to speak up being or believing a little bit more in yourself, Scorpio. As an example, if you work for a company and that company has gotten to the point of really relying on, relying on you, now is the time to ask for that increase. Stop hesitating. Stop procrastinating about asking for that because you're scared that they're going to like say no or you're scared that they're going to end up like not wanting to um, not wanting to help you continue growing in the company. No, what they're telling you is know your value Believe in yourself. This is a confidence card. This is taking the power into your own hands and making things happen. So very, very positive changes coming for you, Scorpios. I am so excited and happy uh, to see this unfolding. Now let's go on to our next, our next sign. All right, and this is going to be Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirit guides, what are the messages for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January 2020? Spirit guides, what is coming towards them? What's unfolding before them? What new opportunities are coming their way? As well as what are the challenges that may come up for the month of January? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, Sagittarius. The royal conjunction is going to be um, it's going to be in your second house and your second house, second house is ruled by, um, having that, having that need to prove something to yourself, naturally known as a money house as well, but it's very connected to self-correcting skill. Uh, it's about building something. It's about asking for what you deserve, but Saturn what Saturn is telling you here is, are you willing to put in the work to get everything you deserve and will you be able to follow through, okay? Um, so this is, for a lot of you guys, this could represent like new beginnings. For some of you guys, it could be wanting to start your own business or wanting to make money on the side um, and it's something that you're passionate about or that you are creatively inspired by. What they're telling you is with Jupiter being here in your second house, yes, Jupiter, Jupiter's telling you, yes, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bring to you that stability that you're looking for. But Saturn is reminding you, are you willing to put in that work? Are you, are you willing to work extra hours? Are you willing to, if, as an example, if you work for a company and it's a nine to five, as an example, uh, but you're also wanting to start your own business, what Saturn is telling you is, okay, are you going to be able to balance your life? Once you get out of work from nine to five, are you willing to put an extra four hours um, to towards that business or towards that uh, money that you're wanting to make on the side? And if the answer is yes, are you willing to follow through? Are you excited about it the first week or are you going to be excited or find a way to be excited about it the next coming year? Uh, because only then will I reward you. So again, um, it's all about new beginnings. It's all about having to prove and needing to prove something, not to anyone else, not outside source, but to ourselves. 
So for a lot of you guys, it could be venturing on, like I said, new beginnings that it comes uh, when it comes to finances. For others of you, it could even be relationship wise, um, understanding or knowing what's working and what's not working and being able to transition or make changes necessary according to what we need to work on in order to prove to ourselves, not anyone else, but ourselves that we are worth it, that I can make as much money as I want if I really put the effort and the energy towards it, that I can find a, a stable, long-term, loving relationship with the partner that's going to help me, that is going to be emotionally supportive, um, as well as <coughs> being able to put the effort uh, to reconnect with ties from those families that perhaps I've strained from, um, but ultimately, uh, all of this will work itself out for you. But ultimately, what Saturn is telling you is, will you follow through? If I if I allow Jupiter to give you these blessings, are you going to continuously work, um, like I said, as intensely or as passionately uh, as you will in the beginning, all the way till four, five, six months from now? And if the answer is yes, then I will completely transform your life. And if the answer is no then I will quickly take those blessings away from you. So again, it's about uh, balance for you guys. Now, let's get into your reading. Your first card here is the King of Pentacles. Some of you guys dealing with Earth Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. For others of you, you are currently on the pursuit of something that it will bring to you materialization or financial stability. Your next card here is the Five of Swords. Five of Swords is your obstacle. So stop asking yourself if you deserve it, Sagittarius. Stop struggling within yourself to find your self-worth, okay? Um, the Five of Swords symbolizes to me an inner struggle, but more than anything, an inner struggle based off of what people have preconditioned in your mind or in your head. Uh, as an example, if people tell us we're crazy, um, and then the more you focus on people telling you you're crazy, the more often people start to tell you you're crazy until you get to the point of feeling like you're literally crazy. And the reason for that is there's no truth behind that, but it's just because we've conditioned ourselves to believe what other people are saying. So what they're telling you is let go of what has been told to you in the past. When it comes to relationships, when it comes to your finances, let go of what people have said about you. Let go of what people have told you that you're capable or not capable of doing. And it's time to really break those chains of bondage to old patterns, to old behaviors, to be able to get to your or to be able to push you towards your best life, towards your new beginning, towards the manifestations of something new. Now, your next card here is the Queen of Wands. And this is your card, Sagittarius. Believing in yourself. Again, like I said, trusting yourself. Trusting your gut, listening to your gut. What is your intuition telling you? Are you listening to your intuition? Is it, you know, has it provided warnings for you and you didn't listen? And then for some reason, something happened and you were able to look back and say, I should have, you know, paid attention to the signs or I should have listened to my intuition. What they're telling you is stop questioning yourself so much, Sagittarius. Stop doubting yourself. Stop feeling like you don't deserve something, whatever it is, whether it's partnerships, whether it's financial stability, whether it's growth, whether it's success, whether it's health, whatever it is. Stop self-doubting yourself and believe in yourself. Your card, Sagittarius. A lot of healing energy here. A lot of healing energy. Finding your power, Sagittarius. That's what I see for you guys. For some of you guys, those of you guys that have been dealing with in the past with any type of addictions or um, with uh, medications, whatever it is that you were overindulging in, what they're telling you now is that you're finding stability, you're finding balance. There's a lot of healing that's coming from this as well as for some of you guys, it could be wanting to rectify the past. So if in the past you've experienced or whether it was you, it was done harm to you, or whether you did harm to other people, people that genuinely trusted you or people that genuinely cared for you. Are you willing to rectify that? Are you willing to show them 
uh, that you're changing, that you're healing. And if in fact, if you are doing this uh, because you genuinely want to be in their life, the opportunity is there for you, Sagittarius. All you have to do is take it. Your next card here is the tower. So the tower card is in your crowning position. So this is signifying to me major transformation, major transformation that's coming from the strength and the power and the belief in yourself, Sagittarius. You have it. You've been dealing with some crazy shit in your life. Enough is enough. Cut the link to the past and move forward in a positive way. And the best or easiest way to do it is to let go of anything that is still dragging you down, whether it's self-doubt, whether it's self-pity, whether it's, you know, constant bringing yourself down or allowing other people to bring you down. Take your power back. Take your power back. This 2020, that's going to be your mission. To prove not to anyone else, but to yourself that you deserve it, that you've earned it. Believe it. The star card. Seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Getting the blessings and assistance, angelic assistance. It's almost like, it's almost like spirit wants you to know that that was them, that they made that that happen for you. Whether it was, you know, waiting for that one phone call from a job you've been waiting for to hear from them and you accidentally missed the call, it's like, boom, they call you right back. Right when you were thinking like, that was it, I messed up, you know, and boom. They call you back again. This is spirit telling you, I have your back. Karma card. All the good karma you've done. In the past, everything you've done for people that perhaps did you wrong or treated you badly. Your good karma is collected. The universe is working with you, not against you, Sagittarius. This also pushes us to understand on a deeper level. All of these are major arcanas. The tower, the strength card, the temperance, the star, the karma card. If you're feeling like there is this major change that is happening right now in your life that it almost feels like it almost feels like you're really having this crisis remember what i told you guys in the beginning of the readings we're going to be put in a situation where we feel that we're experiencing a crisis in your life. And the only way to deal with it, to let go. Let go because spirit will step forward. Angels will step forward. They will come to assist you in this crisis that you're experiencing. And it has more to do on an internal level. They're assisting you. They're breaking down and destroying old patterns that will change in a subconscious. With Capricorn bring, being there, it's bringing the materialization for something long-lasting. Jupiter, Jupiter is your sign, Sagittarius. Bountiful of blessings, good karma, merit coming to you from good karma that is going to give you Something to lay foundations for something long-term. New beginnings. Beautiful, beautiful reading. And your final card, expansion, Sagittarius. Expansion. Moving forward. 2020 is going to be the best year yet for you guys. 
if ever there was a year that was like really amazing for you Sagittarians, 2020 is going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now let's go on to the next sign. All righty. Cappies. Whew. Capricorns. Major changes. Major changes. Spirit guides, what are the messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January 2020? What changes are coming before them? What is quickly unfolding? And what is the challenge that they have to be working through for this coming January 2020? Spirit guides, what are the messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, Capricorns, before we get into your reading, we have the Royal Conjunction in your first house, my dear Capricorns. What does this mean? This house is a powerful transit in the beginning of the wheel, beginning of things, improvising a new life, a new living, time of choices. And Jupiter and Saturn with Pluto, major changes. And the half, um, and the half that wants, okay, so here's the thing. You're going to be experiencing like two parts of you, right? Two sides of you, I should say, are wanting the opposite. So what I mean by that, that's the best way of describing it. Uh, you're going to you're going to be experiencing this time frame of feeling like you have to make choices, and with Jupiter and Saturn and Pluto, uh, it's going to make you feel like half of you wants to do this and the other half wants to do something else. The right choice with Jupiter is picking the more ambitious one, the bigger one, and exercise selfishness. This is something that you're going to have to learn to deal with. For the coming six months, Capricorn, um, sometimes to get it right, you need to be selfish and assertive with your decisions. And you may be looked at as selfish, uh, but this is enlightened selfishness. Uh, the highest octane of the first house is claiming decisions that you know are for your own betterment. Jupiter says, value yourself. This is your life. This is your journey. Capricorn, this year is for you, even if others don't agree. Show them the door. Stop sacrificing for others and start doing for you. And this is something that I know is going to be very, very trialing for a lot of Capricorns, because although we may be known as, um, you know, standoffish, a bit cold, uh, this is one of the signs that is very, very connected to family. So family and the dynamic of family or their opinions on you have major impact. So this is something that may not come easy. But what they're telling you is, remember, Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto are all going to be in your first house. And your first house is, is the sun, it is how people perceive you, is your reputation, is, you know, really being highlighted and putting yourself out there um a lot of you guys getting a lot of recognition recognition uh whether it come through fame whether it come through um really uh shining out everyone else at work and of course who who wants to everyone wants to do great things in life right but the best way of describing what you're going to be experiencing for the coming year uh capricorn is when it comes to really shining your light, especially in the workplace, a lot of people are not going to take that in a positive, right? Because then that's when we start dealing with hate. That's when we start dealing with people, um, you know, trying to copy what we do, trying to copy your style, stuff like that. And you're going to be experiencing all of this. And it's, it's on, on a momentous level. 
So it's going to be other people hearing about it as well. Why? Because your first house is, again, uh, it has the, 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 the royal conjunction in there, which is amplifying everything. With the eclipse that recently happened, this is going to completely transform your life. Uh, when it comes to partnerships, the same thing. Um, the, your partner may be really tested. They're going to be experiencing or feeling like, why are they getting so much attention? Why uh, are they so attracted to the opposite sex? Why, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of attention is coming towards your sign, obviously, because it's in the first house, Capricorn. And like I said, with Jupiter, uh, with Pluto, um, with your own sign, Saturn, you know what I mean? All of this coming together, it's like, like I said in the beginning of, of the reading, um, it's going to be, it's going to feel like you have four or five radios turned on at the exact same time. Um, a bit chaotic. Uh, because you have to keep in mind when you have all of these planets, each planet is trying to do something, right? Because when a planet enters a specific house, as an example, Saturn going into your first house, um, Capricorn, uh, Saturn is wanting to bless you because it's your ruling planet, but it's going to bless you through hard work while Jupiter is there. Jupiter just wants to give you blessings. He doesn't care um, about, the ble uh, about the hard work that Saturn believes you should do before they give you rewards. Jupiter is like, I'm here and I'm going to bless you with whatever you want. And so you got to understand that that energy, it's like both planets are kind of debating, you know, and then you have, you know, you have uh, Pluto there doing, you know, what it's supposed to do, which is that of transformation, that of um, a, a bit challenging as well, and, and the unknown. So you have all of these planets, you're going to be feeling like, you know, like I said, uh, some of you guys are going to be experiencing really completely wanting to settle down, wanting to uh, create a new life with a partner, while others of you are going to be feeling like, no, now is the perfect time to be single, or now is the perfect time to uh, be on the pursuit of anything that brings shine and, and, and light to me like the sun does. So it's an inner struggle that you're going to be dealing with. If you, you may already be dealing with this as well. I know a couple of Capricorns that are struggling a bit because, you know, partnerships are not going the way they want to and they accidentally met someone, you know, and, and you know, it, it's trialing. It's very testing because you're going to be tested. That's what it is. You're going to be tested. And with Saturn, Saturn is your ruling planet Capricorn. Jupiter's telling you. When it comes to making decisions about business, about money, about long-term, you know, um, long-term decisions or long-term uh, results, go with the bigger one, the bigger picture, the one that's going to pay you much more than what you're willing to settle for. It's all about understanding your worth. And with the sun um, being in the first house, this is amplifying, which therefore brings to you all that attention, all that understanding of, well, yeah, you know, Capricorn does deserve this because they work so hard at this, because they do this, because they do that. So again, it's about finding that self-worth in ourselves and not settling for anything else. And anyone that doesn't agree, like they're telling you, show them the door. Because if you don't, and you really take under consideration what they're willing or what they're wanting to do or they're wanting to tame you in this time, um, it's going to hinder your progress when it comes to your growth and advancement. So again, like I said, a lot of you guys struggling with, you know, an inner struggle of not knowing what to do because a part of you wants to do this, but the other part wants to do that. And what they're telling you, it's about being selfish um, for this year. And not selfish in a negative aspect, like I said, but in in the in the grander scale of things, it's about being assertive with your decisions. Um, it's you know, like I said, enlightened. Selfish is the highest octane on the first house. So it's about yeah, I'm being selfish, but for greater cause, for greater good. And you know, along that process, like I said, don't allow other people 
to change the path that you're on because it's going to hinder you instead of help you. All right. With that said, major changes, Capricorn. <laughs> All right. Your first uh, card here is the High Priestess. Listen to your intuition, Capricorn. Um, that's exactly what we're talking about. As above, so below. As within, so without. What they're telling you here is understand, understand that your intuition is something that is guiding you towards your greatness. Whatever it is that you're wanting to do in your life, whether it's finding that long-term st stable relationship um, for others of you, whether you're on the pursuit of success for your business, whether you're on your pursuit towards a career path where you're wanting to really break the blockages and become or get to the point of becoming what they're telling you is listen to your intuition. Very important for this month. Your next card here is the Ace of Wands. Ace of Wands as an obstacle. The only one that's going to become an obstacle for this month is for your uh, yourself, Capricorn, is what they're telling you. Um, and the reason I say that is aces are never blockages. It just, re it just represents or it's a representation of something that may become a bit, um, it may become a bit restrictive in the sense of it won't come as quickly as you would want. Nonetheless, it's going to come through for you. So with the Ace of Wands is passions and, de and desires. Um, if you're passionate about something, if you are wanting uh, to go on this new endeavor, if you're wanting to travel, if you're wanting to um, really make a name for yourself and the company that you're working for, the only one that is willing and able and capable of stopping you is yourself, Capricorn. So keep that in mind. Get out of the way for you. <laughs> Now, your next card here is the Three of Wands, Expansion and Growth. You are already experiencing this, Capricorn. Now, your next card here is the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands could represent Fire Energy, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Uh, for some of you guys, that may be your partner or it may be a person that you're currently dealing or pursuing. Um, and again, it could represent what they're telling you here is be completely honest with yourself. Don't try to keep things to yourself or don't try to now is not the time to keep any secrets uh capricorn because remember um with sap uh with saturn and uh jupiter and pluto as well um a lot of things are coming out to light so walk a straight line if you are uncertain of what you're wanting uh or how you're wanting to pursue in this relationship you got to be honest with yourself okay uh, get yourself out of situations that could blow up in your face. So keep that in mind as well. Now, your next card here is the Five of Swords. So the Five of Swords is an inner struggle, but this is on a mental aspect. Again, what they're telling you, Capricorn, is get out of your own head. If you feel that currently you're experiencing like a crisis, uh, a crisis in the aspect of um, things are so running out of control and like things are not... Uh, going good or you have to make a decision for those of you guys that are currently dealing with uh two options or more than two options what they're telling you is don't rush into making decisions uh because you're not thinking straight for some of you guys you may be pulled towards a more intense or passionate lover but what they're telling you here is again you have to understand whatever it is that you do now is what's going to be manifesting and unfolding before you so do with that what you will for those of you guys that are married or in a long-term relationship uh, and you're still tempted or you're still, you know, doing things you're not or shouldn't be doing, uh, keep in mind that all of that will manifest for you in this coming year, uh, meaning all of that will come out in the open as the sun highlights and uh, brings light to certain situations or secrets. Now, your next card here is the King of Swords. So the King of Swords, uh, this is on a subconscious level. This is what you don't see happening. Now, there may be, for some of you Capricorns, there may be an, um, an air sign, uh, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, someone from your past or directly connected from your past that perhaps may be reaching out, may be wanting to communicate with you. Um, for some of you guys, this was a person that perhaps was not completely honest with you, and they're coming back around trying to communicate um, don't feel um, pressured or like you have to rush into 
uh, making a choice, making a decision, or even answering them. As an example, if they text you, uh, don't feel like you have to respond very quickly. What they're telling you is uh, the reason why they may be coming back around is because they came to the understanding or the understand the knowledge um, that they really did miss out on an opportunity for something long term, or that they missed out on a genuine connection. Uh, with the Five of Cups speaking about remorse. Now, your next card here is your card, uh, Capricorn. Uh, and this is the Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles is the energy currently surrounding you. So obviously Saturn um, really bringing a lot of light to you, a lot of, a lot of attention. Um, and for some of you guys, this could even represent unwanted attention. Uh, like people from your past coming back around trying to communicate, uh, perhaps a partner that really hurt you, really betrayed your trust. Obviously, we don't want to revisit that. Um, but they are saying that for some of you guys, it could be reconnections that are unwanted or uncared for, meaning you want nothing to do with them. But the reason for that is because, again, you know, Saturn is the karmic planet. So if they are struggling um, emotionally or if they've come to the understanding of the hurt, and betrayal or lies that they brought to you it's almost like wanting to mend fences um and again like i said it comes at a cost of unwanted attention for some of you guys now your next card here is the karma card so like we were talking about earlier in the video any good karma anything you've ever done for people that you did in the past that perhaps was not well received or perhaps uh, they did you dirty or they weren't completely thankful in gratitude and they were very selfish. All of these good karmic energies surrounding you, Capricorn, will be manifesting for you January all through the year. Uh, and what they're telling you is that it's it's almost like a collective of good karmic energy. Like I said, anything you've done in the past for people will definitely be blessing you this year. Uh, what Spirit is telling you is there is no good deed uh, that is left unnoticed and that's what they're bringing to you so many many blessings for you guys coming through and finally wow we end strong you guys you have the nine of cups emotional fulfillment being able uh, to feel blessed to feel bountiful to feel grateful for everything that uh, is going to be transpiring for you guys for this coming 2020 so very beautiful reading capricorn let's go on with the next reading as my voice is going out. <laughs> oh, geez. <clears throat> Give me one second while I... <clears throat> Needed to drink. My voice is going out, you guys. I've been at it for two hours and 22 minutes. I was trying to do a short one, but it is a lot of changes that are coming. Um, so I wanted to make sure to put that out there for you guys to prepare you guys for this coming year. All right, Spirit Guides, what are the messages for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January 2020? For the month of January 2020, um, allow me to see clearly and concisely what's coming before them, what's unfolding in their near future and what obstacles should they be or will they be working through for this month spirit guides what are the messages for aquarius sun moon rising and venus january 2020 all right all right aquarius uh the royal conjunction is going to be in your 12th house uh and this house is ruled with um the consciousness right uh house of different consciousness the house of spirituality mysticism massive potential of the quality and style of living for your soul's evolution house of enlightenment climbing stairs of consciousness um is your great prize opportunity to get closer to god or higher spirit meditations uh, spiritual awakenings with saturn you need to discipline yourself to find quiet time. Endure with relentlessness, confidence to achieve self-growth. So it's all about a major transformation when it comes to what you believe of yourself in your heart, Aquarius, 
as well as disciplining yourself to find some time uh, to get closer to God or to get closer to higher spirit. And the only way to do this is through uh, meditations. For some of you guys, travel may be involved um, as this does speak on uh, the different consciousness, which is that of exploring the unknown for you guys. Uh, so all of this is going to definitely be bringing about you. And perhaps you've already been experiencing this, like being pulled towards mysticism. Uh, for some of you guys looking into different religions, different practices, um, massive potential of the quality of style of living. What this means for some of you guys, it could be changing uh, a certain habit or changing uh, a dietary type. The Like, for example, some of you guys going into veganism, uh, others of you becoming vegetarians, others of you learning to fast. Anything like this is connecting you to the divine. And this is um, something that your soul is really, need, really needing at this point in your life for evolution purposes. Uh, so again, major transformations. A lot of you guys, um, like I said, wanting to get closer to higher spirit. Uh, a lot of you guys experiencing um, spiritual awakenings. Now, spiritual awakenings are not something that are very easy to deal with. Um, I think we've experienced that a couple of times in our life. <laughs> and it is by no means easy at all. Um, you may find yourself to be a bit more reclusive or like having, especially those of you guys out there that are not that spiritual, you may start to experience almost like something is missing in your life, but you don't necessarily know what it is. It could be a bit confusing, uh, in the initial stages of the spiritual awakening. But the reason for this is because there is a higher calling here. When we're talking about on a spiritual level, it's not what we you know, on every day, on every day basis do, but it has more to do with our soul's purpose. And for some of you guys, it's, you know, like I said, being, being that feeling of like, you have to do something, but you forgot what you needed to do type of energy. Um, a lot of you guys just wanting to not necessarily be very social. Some of you guys dealing with a lot of emotional, like turmoil, and the reason for this, again, has a lot to do with uh, the 12th house being light, uh, very highlighted for you guys, okay? All right, let's get into your reading. Now, your first card here, Aquarius, is the Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords speaks about experiencing a lot of uneasiness, not being able to trust people very easily. Uh, for some of you guys being extremely tainted, people have let you down. Uh, so now you have your walls extremely up. Um, but as well, this is speaking to me directly about the soul level. And with the Seven of Swords, there is a lot of wounds that need to be healed or that need to be processed uh, in order for you to be able to go into the next phase of your life. So that's going to be something that for some of you guys, you will be experiencing for this month of January. Now, your next card here is the Six of Cups. And the Six of Cups, as an obstacle, indicates um, wanting or refusing, I should say, refusing to want to revisit certain aspects in your life. Um, for some of you guys, it could be very painful memories, memories about the past, memories about um, loved ones, perhaps, that are no longer with us. But what they're saying here is that the reason why you're internalizing all of this and the reason why you're dealing with all these emotions is because there is a lot of chakra points that need to be completely uh, unblocked. And the only way to do that is through healing and transformative type of energy. Uh, so again, I feel that on an emotional level, it's not going to be easy for Aquarians for January. Um, but at the same time, the beauty behind that is because there is a lot of purging and a lot of healing that's happening with you guys, whether you're aware of it or not, that will quickly start to become evident. Now, your next card here is the Emperor card, and this is in your past and passing position. So the Emperor card is wanting to find balance, wanting to find structure. Like I said, some of you guys may be experiencing like there is certain aspects in your life, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in the business, whether it's in your relationships, 
it's like you kind of being a little bit confused um trying to put the finger on what it is exactly that is influencing you or that is making you feel um like you're confused or there's no clarity in your mind and the reason for that is because the structure that they're talking about is not that of the physical but on the spiritual realm okay uh which is the godly consciousness um so i would highly encourage you if you guys are already experiencing this i would highly encourage you guys to do meditations um if meditation is not something that comes very easy to you i highly encourage you guys to go uh, to YouTube or on my channel to find a meditative uh, type of guided meditation that is going to help you through this process. Uh, because again, like I said, I feel that a lot of you guys are confused or feeling like like there's you're not sure what what path you should be on, but you know that you're not where you want to be. And again, what they're saying is that you need to feed your soul. Um, so again, yeah, see, your next card here is the Nine of Swords, a lot of anxiousness, a lot of worry. For some of you guys, it could be that you recently found out perhaps um, that the people that you work with or if you run your own business, it could be that you recently found out that perhaps a friend or someone you trusted um, was a person not to be trusted. Perhaps they were double dealing or perhaps putting their hands on your money. Uh, and this is symbolizing to me a lot of anxiousness. Now, here's the thing. For those of you guys that are in a long-term or, yeah, are in a long-term relationship, what they're telling you is that a lot of you guys are questioning at this point in time if you are with the right person. Um, and the reason for that is because some of you guys may start to experience almost like, like you guys are kind of slowly drifting apart um, or like the relationship has gone stale. Now, for those of you guys that are single, um, you may be dealing with a fire energy, uh, fire being a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, um, where there is a lot of cheating involved, a lot of betrayal, uh, and you continuously keep hoping for the best or wanting um, them to completely transform themselves uh, with the Six of Cups, seeing them through loving eyes. Uh, but what the Nine of Swords Spirit is telling you is stop forcing it. The more you try to force it, the more um, this person is going to be drifting away from you until it becomes evident um, that you've let yourself go or that you've allowed people to walk all over you um, or that you've allowed people to really push you to your breaking point. Um, and again, sometimes, unfortunately, this is necessary for our self-growth. This is something that we need to learn to be able to learn how to love ourselves more and to never allow to be treated in such a way. Now, your crowning energy here is the seven of pentacles. A lot of you guys really looking towards the past or living in the past. Uh, what they're telling you is face, face the reality of what things are. Things are not always going to be perfect. Things are not always going to not change Part of life is changing and you need to understand this and with change like the seasons you you have no control over that so what they're telling you is if you want to really be able to experience the blessings that Jupiter has to bring to you and the long-term connections that Saturn can provide for you you need to let go of the people from the past because if you keep dealing with past energies which is not stable uh, you're keeping yourself from progress towards going towards or walking towards someone that is going to be more beneficial for you and that is going to bring to you that which you've been wanting, whatever it is, whether it's long-term relationships, whether it's partnerships with business, whether it's um, people around you, even friends uh, that are, you know, that just have mistreated you or taken you for granted, what they're telling you is, let go of that energy. Don't try to hold on to them for dear life because the more you do that, the more you're resisting these changes, the more difficult it's going to be for you. Now, your next card here is the Ten of Pentacles. So this is what you don't see coming towards you. For some of you guys, um, 
those of you guys that have been in a long-term committed relationship, again, if you feel that you've kind of drifted apart or like you guys don't have a lot of things in common now um, because life has just taken you two separate directions or is taking you uh, two separate directions, with the Ten of Pentacles, there is a promise here for something um, long-term. And this is with a new connection coming through. For some of you guys, this could be an Earth Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. For others of you, this could just symbolize um, being able to get yourself into the state of mind of having clearly and concisely in your mind what it is that you're wanting to manifest. And what they want me to tell you guys is that happiness is not something that you can find in other people. Happiness starts within ourselves. So whatever healing needs to happen, let it happen, Aquarius. Even if it's difficult or it's something you don't want to go through, really acknowledge those feelings, th that hurt. Um, whatever betrayals, whatever uh, situations that happened in the past that you know people left you, basically they hurt you and then they left you. Now they want to come back and reconnect. What Spirit is telling you is it ultimately it comes down to you. But if you don't take the lessons for what they are, they will continuously keep coming up in your life with different people, but the same lesson. You don't want to go through this all over again. Now, your next card here is the death card. And this is the advice for you. So the advice for you, Aquarius, is don't resist the changes. Let go of what's what's done. Let it be done. Stop going to the past or stop going to the same situation and then wondering why it keeps turning out the same way. With the death card, it's time to embrace the new, the new beginning that is coming from this ending uh, to be able to get you to something more stable. Stop reliving the past or stop resenting people or resenting yourself, feeling like you'll never find happiness or feeling like you'll never be able to attain uh, whatever happiness means to you. What they're telling you is it comes to you when you know you deserve it. When you often question yourself or when you often doubt that you're deserving of it, therefore it will happen uh, where you put yourself in situations that are leaving you feeling like you don't deserve that. going on a lot of inner struggle Aquarius um, this is in your hopes and fears position an inner struggle happening right now again we go back to that of um, the conjunction being in your 12th house a, a lot of a lot of things that are not working out for you a lot of um, situations whether it's in the family dynamic whether it's in your finances whether it's even with friends that you trusted, like I said, and for some reason there was some type of hurt or of them letting letting you down, basically. Um, what they're telling you here is that the reason why all of this is unfolding before you is because Jupiter is bringing to you the enlightenment, the being able to see clearly through people, being able to see clearly and concisely their intentions when they're around you, when they come to you, when they communicate with you. And the only way to make way for new beginnings or new patterns in your life is to embrace the endings and open your heart up to better opportunities or new opportunities. Um, but again, stop self-doubting yourself so much, Aquarius. And finally, your last card here is the uh, pent uh, sorry, the nine of pentacles. So if you're feeling, if you're feeling like you are being pulled towards walking away from a relationship, a relationship that is not working for you. I definitely do see an ending coming. Um, and I think that this is something that may play out for you guys in January where someone's walking away from this partnership. Um, now, for those of you guys that are or have been single for quite a while, what they're telling you is that being single doesn't necessarily mean that you are lonely. Um, now, few will understand that whole concept, um, but going from from one relationship from one relationship to another is not going to um, it's not going to feed or it's not going to uh, fill 
that emptiness that you feel inside. You have to really need to understand why is it that you feel this certain way and why is it that uh, you tend to either run away from commitment or uh, experience situations where the partners that you're with run away from commitment. Is it something internally? Is it something that you don't love yourself enough, Aquarius, or is it out of fear because you feel like you don't deserve happiness? This is something you're going to have to work through um, from January, I want to say all the way to February or for uh, the months to come as well as, like I said, this is definitely going to impact us, not just for six months, for, for the coming year. Um, so again, I hope that you don't run away from this healing that is necessary, but instead work through it to make you a much better person, uh, to really get you to a point of self-loving yourself and knowing your worth and not settling for anything less than that. Um, only then will you be able to find the happiness that you so deserve, sweetheart. Okay? All right, let's get into our last sign. Uh, this is going to be for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what Spirit has for you, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January 2020. Spirit guides, what are the messages for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What's coming towards them? What's unfolding before them? What opportunities are coming to them, spirit guides? And what is the challenge that they may be dealing with for the month of January? So, guys, what are the messages for Pisces? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right. All right, Pisces. So the uh, Royal Conjunction is going to be in your 11th house, house of friends and house of dreams and aspirations. Uh, meditate and visualize what you're looking at. Um, here's the thing. What they're telling you with, 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 these, with these changes that are happening uh, for January for you guys, um, it's all about meditating and visualizing. If you guys don't know what visualizations are, um, you can look that up on YouTube. I've made videos about it on my YouTube as well, so you guys can check that out as well. Um, but it is a process where you're able to meditate and uh, put your intentions or set your intentions through visualization uh, that connects us with the uh, subconscious to be able to manifest in our life what we're wanting to bring towards us. And what they're telling you is that now is the time to do that Pisces. Why? Well, what is it that you see in five years from now? When you think about where you want to be uh, a year from now or five years from now, uh, Jupiter's uh, Jupiter says, dream big, reach high. Saturn, how do you achieve this? Um, if it's if it was uh, it is sorry it is the house of friends uh, and I, it, as well it does play a role. But here's the thing um, with your eleventh house, what's going to be highlighted for you is putting and setting intentions now for what you're wanting to bring towards you and. Like I said, dream big and put your intentions out there. Saturn will definitely find a way to make you or help you achieve this, um, as well as the friends playing a role when it comes to alliances, connections, networks. Um, all of that is it, it definitely going to become very highlighted for you guys for the coming month and for the coming year. Uh, with Saturn, put effort and you will materialize with your energy, Pisces. Uh, you guys are very dreamy type of energy. You're, you could literally dream your life into existence. And Jupiter will bring those connections, your tribes, your people, people that are going to help you, uh, people that are going to connect with you, people that are going to help you network um, when action is needed. Take those steps to make it happen, Pisces. So basically, the sky is the limit for a lot of you Pisces out there. Now is the time to really put that energy towards achieving 
that dream job, towards achieving that dream relationship, that partnership you've been looking for, or you've been wanting. Um, for those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship, how do you want this relationship to progress? Those of you guys that are married and have been married for 20 years, think of more beautiful ways to find and deepen that connection to be able to fully experience uh, this 11th house being extremely highlighted and bringing to you nothing but those blessings and the materialization with Saturn sitting in that house as well. So very, very beautiful, beautiful opportunities coming for you Pisces out there. All right, let's get right into your reading Pisces. Now you do have here the King of Wands and this is your current situation. So a lot of you guys on the pursuit of uh, some of you guys finding your passion or running towards an achievement, something that has to do with finances or what is connected to finances. Um, for some of you guys, this could even represent believing more in yourself, having faith in yourself and the possibilities that you have. Uh, King of Wands is all about confidence. It's all about having not only the wisdom and the knowledge, but knowing the know-how to attain or to achieve certain aspects in every single aspect of your life, I should say. So again, it's all about believing in yourself and having faith in yourself. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with fire energy. Like I said, Aries, Sagittarius, or Leo. Now your next card here is your card, Pisces. This is the King of Cups. So the King of Cups is coming up as an obstacle. And what they're telling you here with your own energy, uh, Pisces, don't get in the way of fulfilling your happiness or your dream. So when I say this is a lot of the times we grow or we're taught in our lives that certain things don't come easy. And then you grow up and it's almost like the universe echoes exactly that where nothing is easy. Relationships are not easy for you. Partnerships are not easy for you. Money is not easy for you, et cetera, et cetera. And what they're telling you is that, again, like we were talking about in the initial beginning of this video, going towards the past, um, what is it that was taught to you from early childhood that prevented you, uh, prevented you from actually attaining or achieving um, the best life that you possibly can? Are you yourself becoming a blockage? Do you doubt yourself? Do you often question um, if you're doing the right thing or when you make decisions, do you quickly regret it? And if the answer to all of that is yes, it speaks a lot about having the need to be more concise, of being more direct and taking ownership of the decisions that you make in your life. So what they're telling you is no one else is going to make your life better but yourself, Pisces. What is it that you're doing to achieve or to attain that? Now, your next card here is the High Priest. So in the past and passing, for some of you guys, uh, you may be uh, experiencing or feeling like you're being very pulled towards um, towards uh, more becoming more religious or more spiritual, I should say. Um, for some of you guys, a lot of you guys will be experiencing for this 2020, finding your guru or finding your spiritual advisor, the advisor that is right for you, the one that's going to help you in this path. For some of you guys, it could be finding a specific practice, a specific religion that keeps you and helps you be more connected with higher spirit. Um, I do see a lot of you guys really putting effort or wanting to put effort towards learning something. So I do see a lot of you guys going back to either college or taking courses, something that is going to help you become more wiser or knowledgeable about a certain aspect or a certain subject. Um, now, your next card here is the strength card. So the strength card does speak about um, passion, desire. What is it that ignites you? What is it that you're working towards? What is it that you're achieving? Um, a lot of you guys, I do see uh, really... For some of you guys, this could signify um, changes in career path. For others of you, this could signify following a passion, something that you're really passionate and intense about, that you really believe in. Uh, and it could start off as a hobby or something that you enjoy doing and finally realize that this is actually a calling because you're very natural at it. Um, now, your next card here is the Knight of Pentacles, and this is what's on your mind. 
so for some of you guys, I do see uh, having the opportunity to experience an engagement. Uh, some of you guys, I do see getting engaged. Others of you uh, moving in or getting married, um, setting the date for some of you guys. And with the strength card, uh, really feeling in complete and utter uh, happiness, something that perhaps you haven't experienced for quite a while. Those of you guys that have been married for quite a while, it's almost like um, the passion is being reignited, being able to find admiration and respect for one another, uh, as that is being very highlighted here for you guys. Now, what's coming towards you on a subconscious level is the Ten of Swords. So the Ten of Swords uh, could signify, again, like I said, um, getting to the point of ending old patterns, old behaviors. I think that a lot of you guys are going to be almost going through this transition of acknowledging, yes, you know, this old pattern of thinking or this old way of thinking has kept me from opportunities when it comes to relationships or has kept me from opportunities when it comes to finances and business and how I make my money. Um, and all of this is quickly coming to an end, going into the next cycle of your life, being more knowledgeable, being more self-aware and more enlightened, which is a very beautiful and more than anything, a blessing. Uh, and it does usually come through a very difficult situation. So for some of you guys, um, like I said, it could be experiencing um, changing the way you believe in something or the faith that you have or a practice that you're learning about. All of this is major transitions that are, you know, molding us into being uh, the best version of ourselves. Now, your advice card here is the Page of Cups. So I do see a some type of offering, some type of giving, um, and it could be coming through with a partner, with the Two of Wands. Um, it could be like I said, an engagement, it could be talking about moving in with each other. For some of you guys, it could be setting the date for marriage. For others of you, it could actually be the representation of uh, being single for quite a while. And with the Ten of Swords, uh, your singlehood coming to an end. Uh, remember, Saturn and Jupiter bringing blessings to you for something long term. Page of Cups is an offering that comes through partnerships. For some of you guys, it could be transitioning, going into uh, becoming partners with someone in the business aspect. For others of you, it could physically mean meeting the person that is going to be your partner. Now, your next card here is the Eight of Pentacles. And the Eight of Pentacles does signify uh, it's in the position of hopes and fears. Uh, a lot of putting effort. Things not coming very easily uh, for you, Pisces, but it comes through determination. The blessings come through determination, through hard work. Remember, Saturn is a very protective and loving father, um, but it is a very old school father. You have to earn it before they give it to you. So again, do not, whatever it is that you're co-creating, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve for 2020, really commit yourself to it, put the effort, and you will see the rewards. With the Eight of Pentacles, it's learning that or mastering something and really becoming proficient at it. Uh, for those of you guys that are single, uh, that is quickly going to be ending for you guys as I do see partnerships coming for something that is going to be much more long lasting or long term. <laughs> Speaking of the devil, we have the Ace of Pentacles. New beginnings for a lot of you Pisces. A lot of renewed energy. Those of you guys that are in a committed uh, relationship, a lot of, um, for some of you guys, it could even be like um, uh, anniversaries coming up and wanting to remarry each other, uh, wanting to um, wanting to remarry each other or do your, what is that called? Your um, remarrying, um, but the same person, not, in all, not a different person. For others of you, uh, it could be having thoughts or ideas of marrying or making a life with someone uh, that could be in the clandestine type of lifestyle, meaning uh, people that are unexpected, uh, people that people that have a completely different lifestyle than ours. Um, and for some of you guys, it could be meeting a person uh, that is 
foreign, um, a person that is not where you're from, um, but uh, the connection may happen while traveling or they may meet you uh, when they're traveling, not necessarily that they're, you know, like I said, from here, that they're foreign to you. Not to you, sorry, that they're foreign. Um, they're not from, you know, from where you're from. So uh, a lot of beautiful blessings and new beginnings for you guys. Um, I do want to mention, because we do have two kings here. For some of you guys, and this could only be like a a certain amount of you guys may be experiencing having or feeling to have to choose between two people. Uh, and what spirit is telling you here is that, um, yes, passion is, passion is important. Um, but if you're basing a connection or a relationship purely off of lust and desire, then you need to understand that as quickly as it comes, it quickly goes. Uh, so when it comes to making a decision, remember with Saturn and Jupiter, um, you need to make the decision of the person that is more practical or the person that is going to uh, not only bring, you know, desire to you, but the person that you know you can rely. Saturn is all about practicality. It's all about uh, long term. And if it's something that is very intense and very passionate, but not a lot of substance in that, um, that definitely what they're telling you is just be mindful about that or be wary of making that choice. Uh, because for some of you guys, it could be um, that you yourself block yourself from being able to experience uh, progress. So this is only to those that are currently dealing with two people, okay? All right, my lovelies, I know that this was um, a very extreme long uh, video, um, but I did want to make sure to note uh, the changes that are coming for each single zodiac sign and where these planet alignments are going to be in specific house, depending on your sign. Um, I wanted to give and provide as much information as I possibly can uh, so that you guys can set out this new year knowing exactly what we need to focus on, knowing exactly what we need to do or what we shouldn't do uh, to be able to experience the best year uh, to come. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this love. I love you guys. I hope that you enjoy uh, the holidays surrounded by your loved ones. Many kisses and blessings to all of you guys. Like, share, and comment, and we'll see each other soon. Bye.